What's shaking, my friends? Luke Dante here. It is Wednesday. It is our live show day. Each and every Wednesday, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time, I am here for you guys. Uh, last week, we had a great interview with Mr. Minnie Lindenfeld. This week, we were back to chat all about a very fun topic, one that you guys are always very, very interested in, and that is all about creating magic. That's right. If you have any questions about you know, what it takes to create your own tricks or even how to get them on the market, that is what we're going to be ta talking all about today. I've got a list of things to kind of share with you, uh, some things to maybe help you if you wanted to do that. I know it's a topic we've talked a little bit about on past episodes, but this week this is a topic that we're going to be going more in depth on and I'm excited to have you guys with me this week. As you can see, I am behind the scenes this week in the old tech room working on some stuff. So uh, we are giving you a little bit different look, but what doesn't change is that we are here uh, again on Wednesday for you guys. So get those questions in. Uh, I see you out there on Facebook and over on YouTube. So uh, post your questions now and we'll get into it. Also some really fun things to share with you as well going on this week. Some really exciting new magic releases to tell you about uh, and just some other fun news as well. And yeah, so let's jump over to uh, YouTube first and see what you guys are up to. What is going on my YouTube friends? Uh, Magic Guy says he got true and he loves the effect. That is really, really cool. It's a good one, right? It is a good one. Something you'll be able to do pretty much anytime, anywhere. As long as you got some rubber bands, you just throw them on your wrist and you are good to go. All right. Um, that truck trailer, what is that? You know what, Muriel? We're actually going to show that here in just a couple minutes as well. Uh, some people have been asking about that. I'm glad you brought it up. It is something that I won't be able to give you the answers to, but we will be talking a little bit more about uh, the truck video that I posted up yesterday over on the Murphy's Facebook page. Some really fun stuff coming down the pipeline over there. All right. Uh, let us see what you guys are saying over here. Um, let's see. Luke, I'm asking myself what you will come up with this week. Uh, what do you mean? What will I come up with this week? What do you mean out there, Maxi Petit? What do you mean over there? Um, let's see. Some other friends out here. Magic Guy says he's been working on a revamp trick with Mr. Mini Linenfield. That's really cool. Always exciting. So yeah, if you guys have questions when it comes to creating stuff, you know, it could be about your own stuff. It could be about maybe taking existing tricks and finding ways to make them new, make them your own. That's always fun too. Uh, Tyler says. Um, He's got a little bit of a creative block with the tricks he's been working on. I tried to take a break back. It didn't work effective, efficiently. Can't read. Uh, so I'd like any tips. What's going on, Tim? Good to see you out there. Uh, so here's the thing, man. When you hit the block, uh, the worst thing you could do, Tyler, is just keep pushing. It's like writer's block, people that, um, you know, that write books and things like that. Um, take a break, but don't stop. What does that mean? Here's what I suggest. Take a step back, and if it's card tricks you're working on in particular, uh, maybe shift over to a different type of magic. Maybe try to learn a different style of magic. You know, maybe something like minimalism or coin magic or read a book. Maybe read a book that you haven't checked out in a while. Just change it up, and I think if you do that, you'll get your mind thinking uh, in a much different way. So, again, that one came in from Tyler. Uh, it's going to happen. Creative blocks will happen. I think we all know that. Um, but the biggest thing is that you don't just quit because of these blocks that come up. They're temporary setbacks. You know what I mean? Um, yes. Curtis wants to know what's with the new intros. Just new fun stuff. You know, things aren't going to stay the same. Things are only going to get better and better, Curtis. Uh, so if you have any feedback or suggestions on uh, any of the stuff we're doing, we're listening. We're changing it up. We're keeping it fresh. That's what's fun about us here at Murphy's. Um, we're always up to something fun. Uh, new Dimension wants to know, uh, how do you test out a new trick to see if it's any good? Well, a little bit like I talked about on this week's update, excuse me, update video, uh, where I was talking about um, how to get over nerves and getting used to performing for people. Um, I think the one thing you can do to test out a trick is use those people around you, the people that you know, the people that know you do magic, and see what they think. Um, they are probably going to be the people that see a lot of magic, you know, whether it's family or friends of yours test the new stuff out on family and friends. And another thing you can do when it comes to testing out new tricks is to record yourself. You know, we all have webcams, we all have our phones. Set up your phone or whatever and record yourself performing because you are your own worst critic. Uh, so I definitely think that that's a good way um, as well is to be honest with yourself. Take notes, look at what you're doing, critique yourself. Um, I know it's not the same as performing for real people, 
Um, but you can also test yourself by recording your own um, stuff that you're doing. So, yeah, what's up, Rob Greenlee? I see you out there over on the old YouTube. Um, Max, you want to know how to create my own routine? I need to know from my show. So I think a lot of what happens when you start to create routines um, is that you take tricks that kind of flow together. And I've talked about this before a little bit when it comes to building sets for your magic. Um, if you're going to build a routine, maybe find tricks that naturally connect. Maybe it's like a card trick. So you're going to come out and make the deck of cards appear first. And then once you have the cards and you can do a trick, and then maybe at the end of that trick, instead of cards ending up in the box, you have coins, and then you can transition into another thing like that. Uh, when it comes to presentation of stuff and routining it, I think a lot of that should be based around things to do with you or things going on in the world. Anytime you can make people relate to you and the things you're doing, the better off you're going to be. So there you go. Feel the magician or magic man, I'm sorry, I'm doing good. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hello from Holland. What's up, Jan William? Good to see you, sir, out there. All right. Um, let's see, Black Mama, first of all, imagine this, you have an idea for a great trick, you know for 2759, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, Anonymous Magician, hello, nice to see you, thanks for joining us. Um, and what's up, Tom Wong, good to see you as well. All right, so again, we are hanging out in the tech room today, working on some fun stuff for you guys behind the scenes. So uh, we will be back uh, in the studio shortly. Um, I am gonna pop over to Facebook as well, wanna see what's going on, see uh, some friends out there, see Kevin. Uh, McNeese is out there. Let's pop up the old Facebook too. Uh, good to see you, Kevin. Haven't seen you in a little while. Uh, Tom Wong, you're also over here on Facebook. You're everywhere. Uh, Leo, always a pleasure. Good to see you. Magic Mafia, you are here as well. Brayden Foster, hello. Alex, always a pleasure. Good to see you as well, sir. So uh, today's topic again is all about creating magic. And, you know, again, I posted it in the description below this video, both on uh, Facebook and over on YouTube. If you've already created some magic ideas and you're interested in releasing them, hit us up. Use the link below. Uh, it is murphysmagic.com slash submit a trick. You know, we do produce magic products and we uh, take a lot of pride in what we do with that stuff. So if you have some stuff that you've been working on, let us know. We would love to check it out. Stefan says he just came from a gig. Well, Stefan, tell us all about it. Uh, we would love to hear how the gig went and tell us more about the gig and what it was. All right. Rob Dodge just popped in. Good to see you, Rob. Always a pleasure. So we'll pop back over to YouTube uh, quickly. Uh, we'll go back to Facebook in just a minute. We'll let Stefan tell us a little bit about his gig uh, that he just got back from. So that's always fun to hear about you guys and what you're up to out there, right? Uh, let us see here. Um, R.D. Jan. Um, I made a linking rubber band routine that is impromptu, yet looks gimmicked. However, I know I can make it better, and I don't know how to improve uh, it, even though there's a lot of improvement needed. Um, you know, one cool thing is when you find something you really like, like rubber band magic, it's, it always helps to read a lot of other things that are associated with rubber band magic. Um, there's a lot of good books out there, a lot of good resources. I know Dan Harlan has a great DVD series on rubber band magic. Joe Reinfleisch is another great person that has rubber band magic. Um, Dan goes over a lot of the basics with his rubber band teaching on his DVDs. And uh, if you guys give me just a second, I think we have it stocked here at Murphy's. So let me just check out... Um, that real quick and we'll have a look at that together. Uh, again, if you guys don't know, we'll pop up the old Murphy's website here. Um, we are a magic wholesaler. So what that means is the magic shops out there, they are the customers that we sell to. We don't sell direct to you guys, the uh, customers. Um, so if you do see something you like on our website or on our social media, feel free to reach out to your favorite dealers and they have the things that you see on our website, okay? So yeah, this is Dan Harlan, Rubber Band Magic. This is Magic Rubber Band's um, Volume 1. Uh, looks like there's three different volumes here. These are now available as downloads, too, uh, as you can see here. Uh, nothing but magic with rubber bands a lot. I mean, look at this. This is everything taught uh, below, uh, right down here. Volume 1, all these things down here. So a lot of very, very good stuff. Um, a nice, huge chunk of material with rubber bands. So I think anytime you're working on a plot, go back to the basics. Uh, look back at the basics and, and see the things that um, may help you. Maybe you could get inspired. I mean, I do that with card magic. I go back to card college. Um, sometimes I can find different moves or slights or different things I could plug into routines I'm working on, and they fix the problem that I'm working on. So uh, maybe that'll help you out. That's a great resource, uh, the Dan Harlan stuff, if you're into rubber band magic in general. Uh, a lot of good beginner stuff. Um, let's see, Phil. Uh, how can I contact you personally to discuss your routine for AGT? I need professional feedback. Yeah, uh, you can always reach out to us on our Facebook page. I know uh, YouTube, you know, is a little bit different. You don't have a place to direct messages, so 
uh, you can use the uh, the good old Murphy's Facebook page to do that. Uh, that is Murphy's Magic Supplies. Uh, check us out over there. Okay. Uh, Joseph says rubber band magic is so sweet, visual, love it. Yeah, I have to agree. And it's something that's so easy. You just pop a couple on your wrist, or if you're in a, a store office setting, uh, grab a couple of rubber bands and have some fun. You know what I mean? Easy peasy. Uh, Swarm of magic. Do you have your own variation of the flip stick? Because I'm currently changing my version with the sharpie and a rubber band. I mean, I do the traditional flip stick move. I did it last night with a pen. I was doing some some magic for some people, and then I took the pen and made it disappear and produced it behind their ears. So those little moments, though, where we make the pen disappear, or those little in between moments, you know, that we use magic, that play a lot more powerful than I think that we give the magic. Uh, those little bits people actually remember later. You might do a really good routine, they'll go back and go. Yeah, but how'd you make that thing disappear? So don't sell those things short, uh, I guess is what I mean. Um, Mini has no gimmick either. That's right, Mini's trick is totally impromptu as well. Good call there, Magic Guy. We're talking about True, T-R-U, uh, from Mini Linux Uh Marianne wants to know, how do you make a rope routine? Are you looking to take existing stuff that you have, or are you looking to learn rope magic from the beginning? Uh, we'll let Marielle get to that while I jump back over to Facebook in just a moment. I want to welcome you guys again. We are chatting all about creating magic today. If you've ever had questions about it uh, or if you're looking for some general advice on it, uh, we are here for you. Um, I've done that myself. Um, you have magic tricks on the market, which is always a fun and exciting thing if you're curious about that. Uh, I've also created magic for TV. Uh, did that for seven years. Worked with Chris Angel for um, his Mind Freak series. So been out there doing magic in different ways, creating it for different things too. So let's see what Stefan says about his gig that he just got back from. Uh, he says, it was a corporate gig. I did some magic and some hypnosis. Got paid about $500, and I'm also getting a recommendation letter being put in. That's awesome, Stefan. Um, can you give us an idea of the kind of material you were doing? We would love to hear more about you, man, what you're up to. Uh, Stefan, that's awesome, dude. Nice little, uh, nice little paycheck there. All right, so keep up the good work, man. Uh, Rob Donner says, banding around is a top DVD. Can't remember who it's from. All right, thank you, Rob. I'm sure someone out there may may know who that is because we have some really smart people out there. But uh, it's another good resource for band stuff called Banding Around. All right. Stefan says, it was people in suits, and so was I. So he was sporting a suit, all right? I uh, did some card tricks and some mentalism. It was great. We had a good time. You know, that's what it's all about, man. You know, you're there to have a fun time. They're there to, of course, have a good time. So can't beat that. Uh, Leo, good to see you, man. Always a pleasure. Bob Miller, thank you for joining us today, Bob. All right. Uh, what's your thoughts on Tarantula 2, mate? Dylan, good question. That won't be too much longer now. We had a little bit of a delay on it, but it's still coming, guys. Uh, so thanks for your patience on that. Uh, just some shipping slowdowns there. You can't stop that, you know. Uh, so Tarantula 2, some really fun things coming up. Uh, I will be having a live chat with Yegal Masika. I don't know exactly when yet because we're still waiting on the, the shipment to arrive before we start to do that. But we will have Yegal to talk all about Tarantula, too. I want you guys to know that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you're keeping up with us on the Murphy socials um, so you know when that happens, okay? Uh, but a couple of really key points with Tarantula, too, that I know you're going to really, really like. Uh, number one is that the batteries now, if you don't know, they're rechargeable. That's a big selling point. You don't have to buy those little packets of the little watch battery-looking things anymore. Big, big thing. Big plus. Totally rechargeable now. Uh, the motor is also silent which is good, totally silent, no noise, no nothing. Uh, also, the, the, the motor, you can lock it and unlock it very, very easily, so that's cool. And also, the size has been made to be a bit more stealth or easily hidden in your hand, even easier, I should say, to hide than the original. I feel better in your hand, put it that way. Can't wait to get my hands on one myself. They are in route from the other side of the world, so uh, can't wait to get mine. I know you guys are excited, too, so it won't be long. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tom Wong says, if you don't know who to credit for rubber band stuff, credit Joe. Joe Reinfleisch, I'm assuming, is who uh, Tom's talking about. Uh, Stefan says at his gig, he was doing the Ambitious Card routine, a classic. I, do, I was doing it last night. I think we all do it, right? Uh, cards cross and a minimalism trick in where three numbers are picked out, and it turns out it's the time of day. I love that. That's very cool. You guys out there on Facebook and on YouTube, when's the last time you did the Ambitious Card routine? And be honest with me, because I did it last night. Uh, Stefan just got back from the gig. He did it. I think that's one of the routines that we all do uh, a lot. So I'd love to hear the last time that you guys did the uh, <laughs> did the ambitious card routine because it is a popular one. Uh, I mean, you've got people like David Blaine doing it on their TV specials, you know, and how can you argue that? And you all remember the guy that was on his first special 
Fruit Loops, right? He was the guy that signed the card. Classic, right? All right. So let's jump back over to YouTube. I did leave an um, uh, uh, open question here from our friend Marielle. Uh, I'm going to try to get back to that and see where that is. So I asked him about the rope stuff. Uh, can you show Magma by Kyle Marlette? I don't have it with me here, Magic. Um, you know, you can check out the trailer online, but I, I don't have the actual gimmick here with me. Uh, yeah. So New Dementia says, I create lots of different types of tricks. I try not to stick in one category. That's good. I like the variety. That's cool. That's really good. But the cool thing is, even though you're like learning different types of magic, you can always apply some of the methods from different areas of magic and bring them into new, and, and use them in new ways in different types of magic. Like honestly, you could use some of the plots and some of the methods, sort of, kind of, that you use in coin magic for card magic. Or mentalism, bring some of those techniques into card magic. There's ways to mix these things up, too, guys, when it comes to creating magic. And again, that is what we're talking about today, guys. It's all about creating magic. It's such a fun topic. You guys always have a lot of questions about it, so I thought we would talk all about that today. And I am going to break down a couple quick tips for you guys when it comes to creating magic. Get back to some of your questions here in just a moment. Um, and I do want to welcome our friends that are joining us uh, from all over the world as well. Uh, so a couple quick tips when it comes to creating magic. These aren't all the tips, just a couple quick ones off the top of my head. If you don't already, get yourself a notebook. I know you have your phone and it has the notepad, but there's no substitute for a real notebook that you take a pen and you write in. Um, no matter how stupid the idea may sound, you should not be your own filter. Any idea you think of, write it down. You can filter out the stuff later. You can look at it and tweak it and do whatever. But never, ever, ever stop yourself from being creative. No matter how stupid the idea might sound, when you go back to it later, it may be something that it just clicks. You know what I mean? Um, I've got some fun things to show you when it comes to notebooks. I found some of my old ones, and I'll be, I have a video coming up shortly to show you. Not today, but in the next few days, uh, showing you some of my old notebooks and stuff when it came to creating magic. And that's another reason I kind of want to do this show today about creating magic. So grab yourself a notebook. Again, don't filter yourself. Before you go talking to other people about your ideas and, and to get them to validate them, don't do that yet. Just keep them for yourself and then you can um, take them and you can run with them and you can start to, to do that type of stuff. Also, another thing to do is I'm going to bring up a book in just a moment. A lot of people have asked me about you know, different tips and, and different things to do to help you get more creative. There's a book that I've recommended uh, a, few, a few times that uh, I'm going to recommend again. This is not a magic book, but it is a book that is, it, it gets your mind thinking creatively. And that's important because it's not just about coming up with tricks. Uh, it's also about using uh, your mind, flexing the creative muscle in a new way. And I think that's something that we all miss. We think it's all about magic, but the reality is you can be creative and apply it to magic. And the key to being creative really is just getting yourself accustomed to thinking in a different kind of way. Uh, so here's the book. Uh, there's a couple different versions of it. Uh, this book, I've shared it before, but I am going to share it again. This is a great book. You guys can find it at any of the major booksellers. It's not a magic book, but it's called A Whack on the Side of the Head. Uh, it literally says here, How to Unlock Your Mind for Innovation. Um, a couple versions of this actually say how to be more creative. This is a version here. It says how you can be more creative. Honestly, guys, this is a book I've used for years. It's what got my mind thinking more in a different way from a younger age, and I swear by it. So uh, that is something definitely when it comes to creating magic. You're not just locked into magic to try to inspire you to be creative. And that's another tip is to find things that help you to be more creative, whether it's music. You know, some people get inspired by music, certain types of music. Maybe it's a certain environment that you're in. You know, maybe you like a certain part of your house. Maybe it's quiet. Maybe you like to have a snack and eat something or uh, whatever. Find whatever it is that gets you in that zone, and that's what you need to really focus on is staying in that zone and then giving yourself a chance to really focus um, during that time too, you know? So let's jump back to uh, YouTube real quick. I'm not going to ignore my Facebook friends too long. But I did want to share a couple of thoughts along the way. I've got a, a lot more to share with you uh, as well. Um, I know that uh, Marielle had something to say about the rote routine. So I'm going to jump back to Marielle. I didn't forget about you. She's uh, just trying to get as much as we can today. Uh, I used fiber optics, but I want to make it a little bit different with the routine of Mr. Richard Sanders. That's a great routine, by the way, if you guys have never seen it. Uh, fiber optics is it's great. Um, how do you make routines for rope? What do you consider it making routines? So here's the thing. 
that is a full routine, if I'm not mistaken. Fiber optics is a multiple phase routine. And I'm sure you could use any of the phases by themselves and it would be great. I think the definition of what makes something a routine is if it has multiple phases. It's not just one trick. Um, like you could call the ambitious card a routine because you don't just do it one time. You don't just do the trick. You turn the card over, put it in the middle, and it's back on top. That's a trick. But then if you do it again in a different way and the card maybe jumps to the top again or jumps to your mouth or goes to your pocket, that's when it becomes a routine, when you add more to it than just a single trick. So I think if you want to learn more about rope magic, though, Mariel, maybe have some other pieces to choose from, definitely check out Tabaret. And I'm going to see if we stock any of Tabaret's stuff uh, for, the, for the dealers that you can uh, look for. So let's jump back over to the uh, Murphy's Magic website together. And we can see, um, I'm pretty sure we do have some of the Tabaret stuff. Uh, he is an amazing performer, uh, very well known for his rope magic. And here it is right here. This is also available on download, which is great. <clears throat> here is the picture. Uh, Tabaret, uh, rope magic, award-winning rope magic Tabaret, uh, the elegant rope magic Tabaret. This guy, he was on the World's Greatest Magic Series, uh, World's Greatest Magic TV Series as well. $24.95. This is a uh, two-volume combo. Very, very nice stuff. And just look at the amount of stuff you're going to learn here. Uh, and he is a FISM World Champion uh, as well. So uh, he does some amazing rope magic. So if you're looking for other kind of pieces to use with uh, your rope magic, this is good. Uh, the Volume 2 is a lot of magic with knots and other stuff. The first one is based on his award-winning rope magic. So Good stuff from Tabaret and uh, Mariel. I hope that kind of maybe helps you out a little bit too. There's a lot of good rope magic out there. He's just a name that if you're not familiar with, he's fantastic. Um, just he's amazing. So let's jump back to Facebook real quick. I don't want to ignore my friends over there too. I know we have friends watching on both uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, again, if you do have questions today about creating magic, we are here for you. Uh, also, don't forget, um, we do also accept magic. You know, we produce magic as well. So if you have anything that you've been sitting on, maybe you have created the next great thing, be sure to hit us up, you know, visit us on our website, go to murphysmagic.com and go all the way down to the bottom of the page and click on the uh, submit magic link. And then I'll show you that in just a minute too. And you can share your magic with us and maybe we'll produce the next great thing from you. All right. So let's jump back here. Um, Daniel Ricks, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while, man. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, Andy Harrison has a good question here. Hey, Luke. What's your thoughts on using uh, unique decks such as the Black Tiger or Ghost Deck? Been thinking about switching to them to stand out. Uh, Lazarus, by the way, I see you out there too. Um, you know, for me, I, I try to use bicycle playing cards um, when I perform. And it's not because I have a bias. Um, I'm just kind of a traditionalist. And people do say, and I've had it myself, um, well, I don't recognize those as that a trick deck. Of course, if you continue on and you prove to them it's not, have them look at it or whatever, that's not a problem. I will say one thing that I kind of use as an analogy when it comes to playing cards, which I think people relate to, and it's something I've been sharing with people when I do perform. Last night I was using the Revolution deck. Um, and so basically I said to someone uh, when they asked me about the deck, which I think this is the Revolution deck, so it is red. I said, uh, yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't a, you know a regular bicycle deck, but this is a deck of cards that, uh, magicians really enjoy using it's uh, you know magicians we're, we're a lot like women in their purses or their shoes and you guys know what I'm talking about and there's I know there's some women that watch this too um, women have a whole closet full of different shoes to go with outfits and also have different purses to go with their outfits and it's this accessory magicians are the same way we like to have our accessories you know we like to have different decks you know mix it up and keep it fresh and that's the way I've kind of explained it to people and so I don't think it's a bad thing Andy to use those decks um, but do be prepared from time to time for people to ask you about it. Um, and, of course, the number one way to get over someone questioning if it's a normal deck is just hand it to them and let them check it out. And once you do that, you're you're on your way. I mean, they're not going to question you after that. Uh, good to see you, Ben Cook. Happy happy late birthday, Ben Cook. I know uh, you were celebrating a birthday recently, so uh, happy birthday to you. Uh, Daniel Ricks, great response. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate that, man. All right. Uh, let's see what else I missed over here. Uh, Stefan wants to know, hey Luke, have you put out cards to the market? I have not. You know, I have an idea for a deck that I actually really like the idea a lot. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, I haven't done too much to make it happen yet. Um, but I'm also not in any rush to do it. But it's an idea that I'd like to see uh, become a reality 
one day for sure. So, uh, yeah. Stefan also says that Eric Jones is doing good on America's Got Talent. He sure is. Um, I'm having a blast watching these guys. There's a few of my friends that I've seen on the show um, this season and past season. Uh, Eric's doing very well. Um, there's a lot of attention on magic, not just here on America's Got Talent, but Britain's Got Talent. There's a lot of attention on magicians right now. Um, and it's cool, you know, Matt Franco won America's Got Talent as a magician. Now he's got a show in Las Vegas. He actually, congratulations to Matt. He just had the theater there at the Link Hotel and Casino uh, named after him. It's the Matt Franco Theater now. So uh, that's really, really cool stuff. But that's been fun to watch America's Got Talent, all the magic. Rob Dodge says a couple of um, books about being unique and standing out are OMG by Jeff uh, Ram, okay, and Purple Cow by Seth Godin. There's another good book by Seth Godin that I like too about standing out. It's called uh, Was it We're We're All Weird? Uh, I might check it out, but um, Purple Cow. I, I like the I like the name of that one for sure. Ronnie Ray, it's good to see you, my friend. Uh, Hope to see you sooner than later, man. I, I know you went to Vegas and you left because it's, I think it's just too hot, right? Uh, yeah. John Fitzsimmons, always good to see you, man. Uh, keep killing it with your uh, your magic videos out there. Good seeing you. Uh, Nathan Armstrong, Alex, uh, check out the art of card splitting martini. There's also a gimmick by, okay, cool. Uh, wow. All right. So here's Alex. I'm getting into my gaffing cards so much I purchased Card Gaffing 101 by Jeremy Hanrahan. Jeremy is amazing at what he does. And got the Gaff Factory book as well. Uh, I've also purchased a craft mat, craft knife, liquid cement glue. Wow, man. You talk about getting creative, you know, which is what we're talking about. And if you have a setup with all these tools, how can you not be creative if you're cutting cards and splitting cards? And, you know, that's another, that's another good tip when it comes to creating magic, guys, is to have a dedicated space um, when it comes to working on stuff. You know, you need to have that space so that when you sit down your mind goes into that focused, creative mindset. Um, if you have, if you just sit down at a cluttered space, you're not going to be able to focus. You're not going to be able to do what you need to do to get creative. Uh, your mind's going to be just as cluttered as your work area. So make sure that your um, creative zone where you're working on stuff is as um, tidy as you want your head to be because it does reflect. It sounds silly, but if you want to be creative, it's not just something that happens. It's something you have to make happen. And being in that right mindset and giving yourself a chance to be in the right area to do it, it changes everything. And that's honestly something else that's worked for me. I mean, a lot of times when I start to get creative and I think of ideas, I'll honestly sit like this. It doesn't matter where I am, but I tend to do the same thing. I'll have a notebook open and I'll do this. And I'll just, I'll pinch my, uh, the top of my, my, my nose here and I'll just sit there. I'll close my eyes and I'll think. And I've been in meetings <laughs> when I worked with Chris Angel. <laughs> and we were working on TV stuff. Uh, I would sit there and I would do that. And he's like, look, are you okay? And after a while, he got it. But you just find what works for you and you use it. You know what I mean? As you go forward. So, yeah. A couple little thoughts, little stories, little things to share with you. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, again, if you're just joining us today, we are talking all about... Um, creating magic, I see one of the guys that's very well known for creating magic, he just popped up on our Facebook page too. I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Marcus Eddy. Marcus is an amazing creator. Uh, he's also an amazing guy. So uh, definitely check out Marcus Eddy's work. He's uh, done a lot of consulting recently too. Dave Blaine, um, I think he's doing a lecture tour right now. So Marcus, if you're out there, where are you lecturing right now? Uh, John Fitzsimmons wants to know, what is the process to submit and launch a project with Murphy's? Good question, John. I'll be happy to go over that with you and everyone else. So one thing that we do ask from people when they do want to submit stuff to us is to have the method figured out. Uh, if you have an idea for something, as long as you know how it works, we're not 100% going to tell you no if you don't have a, uh, a physical product. A prototype would definitely be helpful. Um, and that's something else I wanted to share too when it comes to creative. You don't have to have a working thing. As long as you have something pieced together to, to take your idea from up here to here, do it. It doesn't matter how silly it looks, find a way to make it, and then you can find a way later to make it look the way you want it to. But you gotta start somewhere, it's a process. You can't go from A to Z without going through the steps in the middle, you know what I mean? Um, so that is one thing that we do like from people when they do wanna send magic to us is that they have at least a method uh, that they know. Because we're not, we don't have, unfortunately, with we run a business, we don't have time to also help people to come up with ways to make the tricks work. 
Uh, so with that said, if you go to murphysmagic.com, uh, if you go all the way down to the bottom of the page there, you see all this beautiful new magic. I'm going to tell you about some of it here in a few moments. There is a link right here. You can see it's highlighted. It says Submit Magic. It's underneath the Join Us section. So if you click Submit Magic, we do want your magic. Uh, we'll show you a couple things here. we got some little Q&A things for you to think about. And then at the bottom, it's time to submit the fun stuff. Uh, look for your name, info, and the URL. Now, I mention this all the time. It's so easy, guys. Don't worry about the quality of the video. As long as we can see what you're doing, put it up on YouTube as an unlisted video and put the link right there. Um, again, we just want to see the trick and how it works. And we will uh, reach out to you and we'll take care of the rest. But um, we make it really, really easy for you guys to do that. And uh, we again, we do take a lot of pride um, in releasing products from some of the best in the world um, and also working with some of those people and hopefully uh, you will be next you know so cool so good question there uh, John thanks for uh, thanks for bringing that one up for us all right uh, let's jump back over there and see if that helped him out let's jump back in we'll be back on YouTube guys in just a sec um, let's see uh, gong show August 3rd Are you gonna be on the gong show John I know that's coming back on TV from what I heard uh, Richard Jones won BGT 2016. Thank you, Nigel, for reminding me of that. I appreciate that. I did forget about that. He did win that over there. So uh, good reminder. Magicians win in those shows. I love it. Uh, Garrett wants to know what type of effects should one look at for an opener at gigs? Something quick and flashing or something like a sandwich effect? Definitely quick and flashy. You know, you want to get their attention. Um, if you're doing um, a gig, let's say it's a walk around gig, people aren't at that event to see you as a magician. You're there to add value to the event. So you need to prove to them right away that you're, first of all, good, <laughs> and that you are a magician. It's kind of twofold. You need to show them that you're good, uh, that you're not just some, I don't know, what's the word? You're not just uh, someone's uncle that does tricks, that you're actually a legitimate magician. I think that's important. Uh, so something powerful, visual, and quick, and then you can run into your routine. I mean, I gotta be honest with you guys, when I do card magic, it's in a gig. Very rarely do I just bring the deck of cards from my pocket, take them out of the box and do a trick. I always find a way to produce the deck of cards in a magical way, and then I do tricks with the deck. One of my favorite openers, again, I've shared this before, I can show you guys a trailer if you haven't seen it, it's called Sudden Deck from David Regal. You bring out a card box, it's not printed yet, it's not even put together, you show it. Um, you print the box visibly, show both sides of the box, it's empty, put it together and pull out the deck of cards. It's just an example, but especially with card magic, it's always a shame to me that we have this chance to do magic with something before we even do a trick with the deck. You can actually do magic to get the deck into play. So uh, that's kind of fixes both problems. You're introducing magic uh, or the prop and you're using that as a way to introduce yourself as a magician. But I do not like the idea of going up to someone and using magic as the cold opener. Uh, what I mean by that is back in the day, magicians would do a trick like the color changing knife. Let's pretend like this is the color changing knife. They would basically say, they walk up to a table and they go, hey, did you lose a white knife? And they'd show both sides, no. Well, how about a black knife? Did you lose a black knife? And it's like, you're gonna use magic when they may not even wanna see magic. That I don't like. I don't think that that's a good idea. Yeah, all right. Uh, Marcosetti, hello, hello. Uh, Andrew wants to know, uh, when does magic become one's own? How much difference has there to be something? I mean, Andrew, I think it depends on if you want to market it, put it on the market and sell it, or from a performance uh, standpoint. Um, you definitely need to make sure that if you're going to market something that you do your research, uh, there's been a lot of material that's come out before. There's going to be a lot of material that's going to come out after. So make sure that the stuff that you are releasing is your own. Um, it's easy to go online, not to do Google searches. There's forums, there's us on our page. You can ask questions uh, to get that information. Um, I think that you can build off of other people's work and make it your own. But if you just change a move in a routine, that doesn't make it your own routine. That's your way to do someone else's routine. I think that's an important thing to mention here when we're talking about creating magic, guys, is if there's a routine that you've learned from someone else, maybe a marketed effect, and let's say you come up with a different way to do it, that doesn't necessarily make it your trick. It makes it your way to do someone else's trick. Um, there's, let's just break it down as easy as possible. If you're doing a trick that uses a pass and you do a side steal instead, that doesn't mean that trick is now your trick. You've just found a way to do it 
in your own way. So don't rush to think that you're going to start selling stuff or calling it your own or publishing it just because you change a move. You do need to do more than that in order for something to be your own. Right. Uh, Corey says today, uh, I just started following Marcus's work. Good stuff. It is good work. It's very good work. Yeah. Uh, I know this is not related, but just how good was Richard Turner? Richard Turner was amazing, Rob Dodge. He was great on Pinatel Fullis. Such an inspiration, right? If you guys haven't seen it, check out YouTube. Check out Richard Turner on Pinatel Fullis. Mind blown. That guy, and he's blind. You guys don't know he's blind. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, oh, thanks, Nathan. Yeah, you saw me on that. That's really good. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. Just wait till you see what else you're going to do. Uh, Danny Weiser, good to see you, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Um... Rob Dodge, Richard Turner was excellent. Check out his document. Dilt, yes, you got to check out Dilt for sure. What's Shaken Danny Weiser? Um, I think Sankey has that problem too, making a trick of his own by changing a move. Yeah, it's just, it's not a good idea, is it? It doesn't sit well. People know the difference, and uh, that's just not good. Uh, James Paul, good to see you, as always. Hello, sir. And Alex, yes, he was phenomenal. All right. So, um, I'm going to take a quick break, guys. I'm actually going to give you this week's updates. If you haven't seen this yet, we've started putting these up on Mondays over on the Murphy Socials, in particular over on our Facebook page and over on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked those out yet, make sure that you do. Um, this tells you everything that's coming out each and every week. Uh, and it's also a great chance for you, if you do have questions that you want to have answered, you can post those uh, underneath the comment section of the videos that come out on Mondays. And I grab questions and answer them on there, too. I'm also going to do an AMA soon. I'm going to have a post coming up here probably this weekend where you guys can ask any questions that you want, and then I'm going to do a dedicated video just answering questions, and we'll put that up on our socials too. So check this out. This is this week's updates from me to you. If you have any questions about these things too along the way, I'll be happy to answer those. So uh, enjoy this, and uh, I'll be back in just a minute. Keep those questions coming, and uh, I'm enjoying this. We'll be hanging out for about another 30 minutes or so, so um, get back and relax, all right? I'm having a good time with you guys. It's more of a chill out show today, but uh, it's good. We're midweek. We're getting through the week together. All right, here we go. Be right back. Here we go again, my friends. It is time for this week's update, so kick back, relax, and let's do this. Up first on Monday, I know Mondays can be tough, but not this week because I've got the Green Neck system to tell you all about. What the heck is it? Well, it is a book full of amazing concepts. This is stuff based on an old Bob Hummer principle that's now been brought forward to more modern times. This is stuff that is basically so versatile because you can do it on stage, you can do some of this close up, you can even do some of this stuff over the phone. That's right. This system of stuff is just so flexible to what you can do with it. Uh, there's things you can do like the guess which hand effects, there's uh, chair tests in there, chair predictions, you can do uh, prediction effects in general, you can also do the Russian roulette if you really want to do it. And a lot of other cool stuff. If you want to check out what's included in the book, check out the link below. It'll give you all the descriptions. You'll even see that Gate and Bloom has a lot of good things to say about this. Which should say a lot because Gaten Bloom is a living legend in our art. He is amazing. This is amazing. Check out the Green Neck System if minimalism is your thing. I will be back this Wednesday live with you and for you. That's right, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time on the Murphy's Facebook page and YouTube channel. We will be talking about creating magic this week. That's right. This is a topic you guys love chatting about, you love asking about. So I thought, why not make an entire show based on that topic? So we'll be talking all about creating magic. I've been there. I've done it. I've created magic for the magic market. There's also magic of mine on TV and other things. So I thought, why not bring this to you guys? So post your questions below if you can't join us live. But let's talk all about creating magic this Wednesday. I hope to see you there. Back from the vault this Thursday is Bro Gilbert. Well, Bro Gilbert found something from Mr. Ben Harris. This is cool. This is called A Thought Will Stolen. A magician fooler. Straight up magician fooler. Yeah, this is good. This is something that you will fool the crap out of magicians with and spectators with. And the best part is you can see a full performance of this this Thursday when we post the trailer for this. That's right. Bro performs it. Gives you a better idea what it's all about. This is really cool. Ben Harris, already known as a creator in the magic industry. This trick, just, it's crazy. I don't know how the guy comes up with some of this stuff. I, I just don't get it. How does he do it? Ben, how do you come up with this stuff? Anyway, guys, this Thursday, check it out. Last but not least, this Friday, this is a good one, guys. You want to charge a cell phone? You want to borrow a cell phone and, and charge it before someone's eyes? You can do that with iCharge 2.0. Check it out this Friday. That's right. You're able to plug in one end of the cable into a phone, 
Hold the other end of the cable at your fingertips and watch the phone start to charge. Not your phone, their phone. That's right, you can borrow the phone and do this right away. Super easy method too, I've seen how this works. Very, very easy to do and it's not an app. The phone is actually charging in real time. That's right, this is actually starting to charge. It's not something that you just see the battery thing going up. It's actually charging. So this is really cool, iCharge 2.0. And uh, again, this Friday, so if you've ever wanted to add something kind of impromptu to your act, this is something that does include a gimmick, but looks totally impromptu and impossible, and magic with phones is hot. You're going to dig it. Last but not least, we have you guys posting questions each and every week. I grab one this week from Mr. Boston Myers. If you want your question to be featured on this show, post your questions below this video. You never know, you might see your question next. So Boston Myers wants to know, Luke, you know, I get a little shy when I perform. I get nervous, don't want to mess up the tricks. Help me. What do I do? So Boston, here we go with your question. I hope this helps you out, buddy. And you guys too, if you have feedback and suggestions too, post them below. Let's do this. Let's help Boston together, all right? So what do we have to say about helping someone that's nervous about performing? Well, I can give you the one big key answer here. I hope you're ready. Perform for your family and friends. That's right. These are the forgiving people that are around you. They don't care if you mess up. That's the best part. You have these people around, whether whether it's just everyday life that you see them, or even if you're at like family get-togethers, things like that. These people are around. Do the magic for them. This kills two birds with one stone. Number one, you are performing for people, again, that don't care if you mess up. That is important. Who cares? Take off that stress. They don't care, so why should you? And number two, that's right, number two, you need to perform. You need to be out there performing because the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. It's just like riding a bike or learning to do anything else. The more you do something, the better you will get over time. So Boston, try these tips out. Let me know if they're working for you. If you're looking for more, let me know. We are here for you. And the rest of you guys, too, if you have questions, post them below. All right, guys, that is it for this week's updates. I hope you were enjoying them as much as I did when I saw them. There's so many amazing things coming in week in, week out, and I really have a good time checking this stuff out and telling you all about it. Again, these links that I'm talking about to all these products are posted at the end of the week and throughout the week. So if you see something you like, just look below this video. The links are going to be right there for you. Click them and check them out. All right? It's that easy. And if you have questions in the meantime, don't forget to check us out over on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. You can post questions over there and just keep an eye out on the rest of the amazing magic that's coming out. Uh, there's just so much out there that we do our best to put it all out there for you in as easy a way as you can find it. Catch you guys next time. In the meantime, you know what to do. Practice, perform, practice some more. I'm out of here. I will see you guys next time. And here we are again, my friends. That is this week's updates. If you have any questions about any of the things that you saw in that video, I am more than happy to break those down for you right about now. Paul Green, I see you popping on our Facebook page. Hello, Mr. Green. Good to see you. Uh, Stefan was asking about uh, iCharge 2.0. It's actually going to be on pre-sale this Friday. Uh, the release date on it is July 31st. So uh, the phone trick where you're able to borrow a cell phone, uh, put the plug in and hold the other end and have it start to charge, uh, that is going to be on pre-sale this Friday. And again, it will be uh, available for purchase on July 31st. Uh, it's great. I have seen how this works. I think it's very, very clever. Um, the creator's name is, um, I can't, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Let me see. Danny Weiser's asking that over on Facebook. So let me pull up Facebook. Uh, let's see. Danny wants to know. So let's pull up his question right there. Uh, I think I just had it on my phone. So let me look. Um, the name of the creator is, it's produced by Silver Wing. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, I don't know if that's the company, but that's the information that I have, uh, Silverwing. Some really nice uh, quotes for this phone trick where you're able to have it charged by itself. David Regal says, this is the very best solution to this plot and a wondrous thing. Sean Farquhar says, it's a deviously clever device that allows you to perform an effect that is relevant and amazing. I think that's what's really cool, and that's another thing we've been talking about today on this week's episode about creating magic is performing and creating magic that is relevant to people. And magic with cell phones is a very popular thing because everyone has a phone. So I think, again, when it comes to creating your own magic, guys, um, look at things that are popular and that are around you. And speaking of that notebook from earlier, don't forget to write these things down. Uh, make a list of all these different tools and things that are available to you and around you, like cell phones, your keys, money, your wallet. Use those as your tools to create with, and that way you'll always have magic ready to go, and it'll look and feel like it's magic that's just happening uh, at a moment's notice, which I know people really, really like.
So a couple of other thoughts when it comes to creating magic. Uh, when I do sudden deck, I don't produce a regular deck. I use the mental photography deck. It's a great combination. There you go. I love it. A good combination, a good creative way to use uh, two gimmicks in a new way. Very, very good idea there, Chan William. Uh, yes, very good stuff. Uh, bro, I start learning years ago and I quit in the middle because of money problems. Uh, I'm sorry to hear about that, but you know, that's the, that's the one good thing. If you, if you have books, if you invest money in books, those books will always be there and you'll always be able to go back to them and, and to learn things and apply in, in new ways. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so that's definitely something. Uh, has anyone got true? Uh, it's from Greg Williams. Uh, just got it last weekend. Love it. Wasn't a rubber band guy, but learning it and loving it. That's great to hear, Greg. Yeah, we had a mini on last week, guys, if you're just joining us this week. Um, it was a really, really fun interview, and True seems to be a very popular release because it's well within the grasp, as Greg says, of anybody, even people that have never touched rubber band magic before. Um, and so it's nice that you're able to literally grab something like rubber bands and do not just one trick, but a routine. You can do a routine with this. And the last one where the rubber band goes from your finger onto a spectator's finger is very, very powerful stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's very, very visual, as uh, Magic Guy says. Yeah. Uh, thinking getting true, uh, good to know. Yes, Ryan. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Can I do a performance double cross? I don't have the gimmick here with me, um, but I did see some people talking about it earlier. I think it's a great, great thing. I do have it myself because I do really like that. Um, it's not very difficult to do. Um, but it is something that you will have a lot of fun with. And there's a reason why you keep seeing people online putting up videos of them performing double cross. It's, it's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the expert at the card table? Uh, a in a magic wants to know, I think it's a good book. I think it's a bit advanced for people that are new to magic. I think some people kind of get misguided. That's not a book for people that are just learning how to do card magic. Um, it's, it's a relevant book for us as magicians. There's a, there's history there and there's things to learn, but I don't think it's a book that we should be looking at recommending for beginner magicians at all. Uh, true is all I've been playing with this week. That's cool. Gaff magic. Hope it's uh, treating you well so far. Uh, the creators of the effects will soon be in money problems if you don't support them. Yes, that is something Tom's mentioning when it comes to pirating, pirating magic. Um, I'll say it as a creator myself. I'll give my little ramble on that. Um, don't forget, guys, that people that sell magic, people that invent magic and then sell it, have their tricks on the market, don't make a ton of money doing that. Um, so if you decide to go around that and download it illegally or get it illegally, you are literally taking money from people's pockets. Uh, a lot of these magicians have families, uh, whether they're performing and, and inventing magic and selling it. Part of that money that they do live on comes from selling the magic that they create. Um, and a lot of times that material that you're stealing, these guys have been working on it for years and years and years before they even decide to release it and sell it. So if anything, if you're not looking to buy it because you don't think the trick's worth it, buy it because of the time it took to invent it. Because without them doing that, you wouldn't have this trick to perform at the end of the day. And I think that's definitely a topic that I'm going to talk about on an upcoming video just about when it comes to pirating magic and my thoughts and from a creator standpoint, what it means. I'm going to do a whole video on that, but it's definitely something to consider. I know that there's a lot of young people that watch this. There's older guys too, but I know to the young people out there, they think, oh, it's just something I can get out there online. It's a terrible mentality um, because if, if people continue to steal magic from magicians that create it, then those people are going to be less and less likely to want to sell it or put it out because why should they when people are just going to take it? You know, that's no different than someone walking into your house and taking your TV or your stuff. Like, well, it's the same thing. It just doesn't feel like it because you're doing it anonymously through the internet. I think that's a pretty sad thing. And as a creator of magic, I can tell you, it's something that does stop a lot of magicians from wanting to put out magic because they're wondering, well, if I do it, are people just going to steal my work? You know, so definitely something to consider. Uh, I don't want to ramble on it, but it is definitely something that uh, I think we should all be aware of at the end of the day, you know? So, uh, do you prefer gaff magic or impromptu magic? And I must know. I, do, I like to do a combination of both. I like to do a combination of combining sleight of hand with gimmicks and gaffs. And when you do that, you can do some stuff. Because let's be honest, and this comes to creating magic too, because that is today's topic. You can only go so far with sleight of hand. You can only do so many things with pure sleight of hand. But if you combine sleight of hand with a gimmick, because some things you could do with a gimmick, you just can't do with sleight of hand. So don't be embarrassed or uh, 
you know, don't stop yourself from exploring gimmicks too, because sometimes they can allow you to do things you just can't do with pure sleight of hand without them. So I love to do a combination of both, and when used well together, that's when you start to create some very, very powerful magic. So, um, Greg Williams says, uh, "Mini is a genius. He has me looking into other rubber band things. That's cool. It's good. That's kind of kicked you off onto other things there, uh, Greg. Very cool." Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Parker wants to know what happened to your other office with the cool wall decor. Uh, I am backstage in a uh, in the tech room right now, working on some stuff. Uh, so um, back in the studio again soon. But today is more of a relaxed kind of hangout day. So studio is still there, just giving you guys more and more fun stuff. So just chilling out here. Yeah. Uh, Ryan wants to know. I like I like them. Jeb prefer. Uh, the first edition does. Okay, cool. Um, let's jump back over to Facebook too and see what you guys uh, are up to. I don't want you to think I'm not thinking about fans. Over. Whoa, here we go. Whoa, someone posted something big. Uh, Stefan wants to know, how can I work for a magic company? I think that's something that just comes over time. Um, I, you know, I've been around magic for 30 years now. Um, you network and you get to know people. Growing up, I, did, I went to magic conventions not just to learn magic, but also to network with people in the industry. And magic's not that big of an industry. So when it comes to creating magic too, if you guys are working on stuff, um, if you come up with good magic, the right people will know about it at the end of the day because there's not that many people in the magic world in that way. You know, um, So I think that if you really want to work for a magic company one day, just be uh, someone that, that pops up at conventions, that, that, that knows people, that gets to, you know, has a good reputation in the industry. And that's another thing that, you know, went back to creating magic. Again, you need to do the crediting and you need to make sure you credit the people that you've inspired, that's inspired you um, to create your own magic. Because if you're not and you're just a thief and you put out ripoffs and stuff, people will know about it. That ruins your reputation and who wants to work with someone that has a bad reputation. Uh, and word goes so quickly. Yeah. The magic industry so keep that in mind all right um how about earning a living as a magic consultant for tv and film nigel wants to know you know nigel i did do that uh i worked with uh, chris angel for seven years uh, in a consulting role uh, also as a director and producer and some other stuff um here's the thing when it comes to being a consultant for tv and film um just like his tv series mind freak came to an end all TV and all film will end. It's going to be an amazing ride, right? Being a magic consultant is a lot of fun. It could also give you a lot of stress because you're doing what you love and then there's an end date. A TV series, they're done with production and they may or may not get picked up for another season. That's stressful. Um, film is the same way. If, you get, you know, if you're a consultant for a film, a movie, you're only there for a limited amount of time and then you're out of work, basically. So... If you want to get into that world, be aware that it's not a very stable world, the consulting world. And it is fun to create magic for these different things, but I would recommend that if you're going to do that, to maybe have your hands in other things too, uh, or at least be aware of the fact that you're going to do these things for a short amount of time and be smart enough to, to know that at that time you need to have something else ready to go at the end of that run too. Because again, in TV, there is no guarantee at the end of any season that the show will get picked up again for another season. And that's pretty nerve-wracking stuff when you're just a consultant and you're just hoping that the person you're working for is going to get picked up again. So, I mean, Chris did an amazing job. He had a run of six years uh, on A&E, six seasons of Mind Freak, and that's crazy. You know, it was a series, uh, but any TV show will will end at some point. So it doesn't matter if it's that or, you know, anything else. So, yeah. Uh, hope that helps you out there, though, Nigel. Um, James says, so I've been working on a few uh, new tricks. All right, that sounds good, James. Uh, I know they aren't original, but the, they're original in the way that they're performed and how, um, uh, and how they're performed. No one's doing it. What do you recommend I do to show it off and perform? To get my name out there. I'm pretty sure this is big stuff I'm doing and working on a positive. There's definitely a market out there for it. Um, I know they aren't original. So it, the thing is, though, is, is your audience magicians or are you a performer because if it's magicians you know you could put up these ideas film videos of yourself doing these tricks um, put them on the magic forums on social media uh, Facebook you know there's magic groups and things like that you can post up your videos get feedback join some of those private groups 
see if you have any friends in any groups, try to get yourself invited. I'm a part of a couple of groups on Facebook where people just go on and post videos of themselves with ideas, try to get feedback and things like that. Um, so that might be a good way to uh, do that. Also, if you're near any magic clubs, maybe try to get yourself over to a magic club. Um, those guys there offer you know good feedback. Usually someone you should find there to be able to help you out uh, as well. But I know those type of magic shops are becoming fewer and fewer these days, unfortunately. So, yeah. Um, with all the creators out, uh, here, how do you choose a name for an effect, and how annoying is it when a similar makes effect is released? So, Rob, yeah, name naming an effect is something that I'll tell you what some people do. I'll actually show you guys what some people do when it comes to creating a name for a trick, and I've done this as well. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So, um, I'm going to bring you back over to um, our, our browser here. You can come for a ride with me. So, I'm going to go up to the browser. I'm going to go to a website that magicians have told me they use and this is what it is thesaurus.com okay so let's say that uh we have a trick um you know what give me an idea let me come back to my screen let's do this together so go to thesaurus.com rob asked me how to come up with a name so let's come up with a trick name so rob what type of trick should we name um or anyone out there that's watching, I'm looking on Facebook and YouTube, what type of trick should we name right now? And I'll, I'll kind of show you the process that I've used before. Um, let's see, uh, Magic Guy says thumbs up if you've ever seen a drunk magician. <laughs> I'll give you two thumbs up for that. Um, but yes, anyone out there have uh, something that the trick is using, like a certain prop or a type of trick. Coin Vanish, right? So. Rob Dodge, uh, I'm going to pull it up here on Facebook, says um, we're going to be talking about a trick that's created as a coin vanish. So let's say we have a brand new way that we've come up with a way to vanish a coin. Uh, maybe it uses a gimmick, and you can do a super impossible looking coin vanish, okay? Sounds exciting, but now the hard part comes to what do we call it. So this is something, again, that, that was shared with me by other magicians. So this is what you do. You go to thesaurus.com. Again, I'll pull up the website with you. And what I'm going to do is, because we're talking about coin vanish, why don't we take a look at the word vanish in particular? And let's see what the results are that come out. So some of the synonyms for the word vanish, evaporate, fade, melt, clear, dematerialize, evanesce, which actually, look at this. This was the name of a coin vanish recently. This one right here. Oops. Uh, evanesce. This one right down here. Uh, was named recently as part of a way to vanish a coin. So there you go. Exit is another one. Peter Eggnick came up with a way to vanish a ring and cause it to be uh, on your um, necklace. So a ring vanishes, appears on your necklace. Uh, and become invisible, go away, fade away. Um, of course, there's going to be some antonyms as well. Um, the opposite of those, solidify, appear. Then here's some other words related to vanish. Uh, duck out, escape, fade, flee, fly the coop. So, I mean, not all these are going to work for names, but a lot of people do this, and they'll look at other ways uh, that that word would make sense. You know, dissipate, fizzle out. I mean, you've got all these different words. So that is definitely uh, one way that I know that people have decided to name a trick is they'll go in there uh, and they'll type in um, a name of something that has to do with the trick, and then they will take the name from that. I mean, it makes sense, though, because it's related to what you're doing just in a roundabout type of way. Um, so that is definitely something to consider if you guys are, because that is the fun part though, isn't it? When you get down to the end of the day, uh, you've worked on all this stuff, you know what's original, you've got your first trick, and then it's like, oh man, but what do I name it? That's a pretty big deal, right? Because you've got something. Uh, Danny Weiser has another opinion, which I, I like, or another way to do it. He says he uses song lyrics, which is another cool way to do it. Uh, I know that uh, my buddy Aaron Fisher used to do that with Beatles songs. He used to name some of his routines on Beatles songs, so the songs themselves, um, which is pretty cool. Another another fun way to do it. So, and and guys, again, creating magic. It's fun to get to that point, and I hope that there is someone out there that's watching that has been working on something, and you're getting close to the point where it's like, you know what, I finally have something. Uh, that I'm ready to release on the magic market because to to whoever you are out there or maybe you're someone that, that wants to do it It will be one of the most 
fun things that you will do in the magic world. It is really, really fun. But I want to prepare you for something as well, okay, when it comes to creating magic. If you're going to market it, put it on the magic market, be prepared for criticism. For some reason, magicians are the most entitled people <laughs> on the forums and stuff when it comes to methods. They want, like, every single box to be checked. Well, can it be examinable? Well, can it be reset instantly? Can it do this, that? It's like you're never going to please everybody. And that's one thing I want you all to remember is if you are going to start to create magic, don't let that stop you from being excited when the trick finally comes out because that shouldn't ruin that moment. Because I remember how exciting it was when I first released a trick on the magic market. It felt so good. It's like, oh my God, this is my trick. This is so cool. And then you start to read people's comments and it's like, well, crap, man, like people don't like it. It's not that people don't like it. It's just that they're spoiled. They want it to be like real magic for some reason. And if it doesn't, if, if it's like instant reset, but it's not examinable, then they don't, then they complain. Or if it's, um, if it's not, if you can't do it surround, if you can't do it surrounded, but it's instant reset, they're not pleased. Like you, you're not going to be able to please everybody. And don't let the people that are out there talking about this stuff stop you from releasing it uh, or from being excited about it because it's going to happen. So don't let that criticism get you down. So I do want to prepare you for it, though, um, if you are thinking of going down that path when it comes to creating magic again, which is what today's topic is about. Don't let that stop you, but also you do need to be aware of it because it will come. And a lot of people have stopped putting out as much stuff because they just get sick of people complaining about stuff at the end of the day, you know? Um, they're asking for miracles, not magic. Yeah, there you go, Rob. Rob Greenlee says it best, and Rob's, you know, he's a very creative guy himself, so he gets it. Um, Curtis says, do you think magic will still exist in 50 years? I'm scared about exposure. It will. Look, I can't predict the future. I'm not Darren Brown. <laughs> um, here's the thing, though. I definitely think it'll exist. Uh, the reason I think that is because even though exposure is happening and will continue to happen, magicians will always find ways to be ahead of our spectators, hopefully. We'll always find these innovative new methods to do things. Maybe it's finding new methods to do things that we used to perform. Maybe it's new ways to do things we've never done before with new technology. Um, people are doing really cool things now with cell phones and stuff like that. Um, yes, I think it will exist. Think about this. About 15 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, I think, the mass magician popped on TV. He was on Fox TV, which over here in the States is one of the main networks, one of the top four networks. You got CBS, NBC, ABC, and Fox. The mass magician specials, you know the ones I'm talking about where the guy wears the mask and he reveals all the tricks. People were freaking out then. They thought that magic was going to be ruined. Everyone's going to know our secrets and magicians were going to be out of work. It couldn't be further from the truth, right? Because he did it. We are the ones, really, that made an uproar about it, aren't we? We're the ones that brought more attention to that revealing stuff than really people cared. There were magicians in an uproar on TV stations. They would go in and say, oh, my God, I can't believe this guy. And, you know, they would interview magicians. What are your thoughts on this? And people would complain, which made it an even bigger topic than it really was. That should tell you just how strong we are as magicians and the secrets that we have that there can be an entire series on magicians and how our tricks work, but it's not going to stop people from seeing what we do because if we don't make a big deal out of it, then you know people aren't going to pay attention to it. Uh, and there's a reason why we're all still here now. And if that can happen on TV, if it happens on the internet, uh, I'm not worried about it. You know what I mean? So you know things are definitely going to evolve. I think the things that we do with magic, the the different pieces that we do maybe instead of a deck of cards maybe we do some of these things with a phone now we're going to evolve but i don't think that we're going to be out of work i don't think that we're going to lose what we have because um you know we're always going to try to evolve what we do you know hopefully yeah uh take care jam william catch you next time buddy um greg says i truly truly believe it will okay so he thinks that it will exist in 50 years uh, Magic JJ, any good table hopping tricks? So Magic JJ, there's a couple of good table hopping tricks, of course. Um, what type of stuff are you looking for, though? Are you coin guy, card guy? Are you a mentalist? Like, what type of stuff are you looking for? I can try to try to help you out with that. Uh, some of the things I used to do, I used to do like a bill switch uh, where I would do a mismade bill. Um, a really good thing about doing table hopping stuff with money is when you get people to hand you money to do a trick with, 
they're very likely at the end of the trick to let you keep it. So that's a good way to make tips. Chicks with money are very good. Extreme burn 2.0 is a great way. You know, you take out the, the, the dollar bills and then you change them into hundreds. It's a great piece of magic. Um, you should do another trick called misled. It's where you take a bill and you take the pencil and you have it melt through the bill. Coin magic, coins across. You could do sucker punch. It's great for table hopping. You could do some really nice visual magic with that. Um, magic that happens up here. So rubber band stuff would be really good. Uh, True by Minnie Lindenfield. It's great for table hopping because it can all happen up here. Um, so yeah, let me know if you're looking for a little more information. Of course, for openers, I mentioned it earlier, Sudden Deck by David Regal. Fantastic piece of magic. Um, Rob Greenlee, who created something called Ziplocked, says, After Ziplocked released, I found a super long hate thread about me because I didn't like the method. And that's what I mean. You know, Rob released a trick, and then he saw all this negativity, not about the trick, but about him. There should be no connection between that stuff, guys. That doesn't make any sense to me. But, of course, some people will take that stuff personal, and that's not good. You know, we should all be supporting each other as magicians, not trying to tear each other down or complain or criticize and that's, to me, where the big disconnect is. I don't know why that stuff happens, but, you know, especially as small of a community as we are, it seems to happen more and more, which is unfortunate. So maybe um, we could all try to be a little bit more aware of that ourselves. Another great table hopping trick, by the way, uh, Magic JJ, is Leap. Leap is great. The trick where you take the glass, make the coin go right inside of it, it looks great. It looks super good. Greg Williams, exactly, Luke, for the most part, people... Uh, love the wonderment of magic incorporating new tech iPads, cells, etc. into magic will just continue to grow in amaze. I agree, Greg. Yeah, well said. Um, Tom says, Magic JJ, check out the chop glass. Uh, that's another good one. All right, good stuff. Uh, yes, Rob Greenlee did create uh, Ziploc. Someone mentioned that. Uh, headphone magic is another good thing. And again, Minnie Lindenfield on last week's show did say that some, some of the stuff you could do with True, you could do with headphones. You could make them go through your fingers. You could pull them through. Pretty cool. Um, um, Rob says, honestly, it'd be really cool to do an evolution of magic show and start with the very first cups and balls and move through history. That'd be fun. I think we could do that one day. That'd be cool. Uh, Tim Brown says, one of the beautiful things about magic is it always growing and evolving. Every next generation has new tools at their disposal. That's right. Very well said, Tim. I like that. Very, very well said. Um, all in all, are you just against people revealing other tricks or are you also against people revealing their own creations for free either on YouTube or Marketplace? So, I mean, here's the deal. When it comes to revealing stuff, um, if it's your own stuff, you do whatever you want with it. I can't tell you what to do with anything that's yours. That's not up to me. Uh, my only kind of disconnect is when people decide to go and reveal things that don't belong to them, methods or tricks that they didn't create for their own personal gain. Um, that I don't like because they're taking someone else's work and they're using it to benefit themselves. And I don't know. I mean, as a creator, I wouldn't like it if someone took one of my tricks and decided to teach it just to help themselves in whatever way that they're doing it, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm not a fan of that type of stuff at all. I don't like it. Uh, Magic JJ, you are welcome. Uh, Chris Cram, good to see you, sir. You just got done with your weekly show and inspired a sixth grader and told him about the live hangouts. Chris Cram, you are the man, and congrats on the gig, man. That's awesome, dude. The weekly show, hope it went well, my friend. Uh, Curtis wants to know, do you think Royal Road the Card Magic is a good book for beginners? I think it would work good for beginners. Yeah, Royal Road is one of those kind of basic books that could get more advanced throughout the book. Um, you know, my personal opinion when it comes to card magic as a beginner, I'm always for card college. Start with volume one, and then pick up the rest as you go. But Royal Road is good too, and it's cheap. So uh, you can get a good paperback version of that uh, for sure. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Zitram says the best trick for table hopping, borrow a bill, vanish it, and run. <laughs> I'm not going to endorse that. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Greg Williams, uh, I think people would find that kind of historical show really interesting too. And pretty sure you can still get them. Okay, cool. Yes, we should probably do that. Yeah. Um, what differenti differentiates Murphy's download section from others? Uh, I mean, I think the one big difference, you know, is that we don't just sell stuff on our own. We sell it to dealers all over the world. So the things that we have, it's offered up to dealers, you know, not just one dealer, but all the dealers that are out there, you know? Yeah. Weekly show went great. Good turnout. Got good tips too. Sounds like a win-win to me, Chris Graham. All right. 
Uh, you know, there is something else I want to remind you guys. If you haven't seen this video yet, I put this up on Facebook yesterday. Um, I always want you guys to know about the new stuff that's coming, and this is something that's pretty cool, pretty exciting, um, that uh, I can't give you too many details about yet, but I want you to know that something really cool was coming. Um, so I'm going to play this for you real quick. Uh, again, this was up on our uh, Facebook page yesterday, so uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you do keep up with us on Facebook. We do post content there, too, that you don't see on YouTube, so make sure to head over there and give us a follow. Uh, and also, um, if you're watching on um, Facebook in particular, make sure to turn the notifications on. You can do that now very easily on your uh, mobile devices too. So when we go live, uh, you get notified. Pretty easy to do. So uh, hang tight, guys. Check out this quick little teaser clip of something that's coming your way. Uh, we'll be back to take a few more of your questions. We're talking all today about creating magic. Got a lot of good questions for you. I have a couple more tips for you too along the way. So uh, check out this little teaser clip. Um, and then we'll be back to hang out with you guys for a few more minutes, okay? Something exciting is coming up, you know, the guys here at Murphy's, they kind of discovered uh, like sort of a stash of uh, just thousands and thousands of these Years ago, somebody had just kind of put these in a warehouse somewhere in the UK and, and sort of forgot about them. Uh, they've been sitting there for, you know, dozens upon dozens of years and um, somebody just sort of rediscovered them and said, hey, we should need to do something with it. What was in that truck? Do you guys have any ideas? Maybe uh, post some comments in the uh, sections there over on Facebook and YouTube. Tell me what you think is in that truck. You will find out sooner than later, but I can't tell you at this time, but I would love to know your thoughts on what you think is inside of that truck. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, I want to jump back onto Facebook as well. Uh, I haven't been there in a hot minute. Um, Daniel Ricks had a question. He says, if someone releases a trick through Murphy's, does the creator still own their trick or does the company own it? So. Pretty much when we um, when we do something like that, it's usually we own the rights to the product. Now, it's a little bit different if you already have your own trick that you've produced. There's two ways you can do it when it comes to creating magic, okay, guys? Number one, um, let's say that this is a trick. This is my phone, but let's say this is a trick that I contact a company like Murphy's, and I say, I have this trick. I've already made it. I've got a bunch of these. Would you guys like to sell them to dealers all over the world? Yes, we would love to carry your trick. This looks really cool. We'll, we'll take this many and we'll, we'll sell it. You have ownership of your trick. A little bit different when you come to us with an idea uh, and then we invest the money to produce it. We shoot the instructional stuff. We shoot the trailer for you. If we put all the work into the product, then part of the contract is that we will help to produce a product that then becomes our product. It becomes a Murphy's product. And that's pretty much the way it works throughout the rest of the industry. Um, you know, again, if you have a finished product, people will carry it for you. They will stock it. But that includes you having your own trailer. That includes you having your own instructional DVD or download um, and having all the tricks produced, packaged. That comes out of your own pocket. So you still own everything. But if you choose to go through a company and have them produce it, um, then they will own the rights to the product. And that's pretty much how it works in the industry and has worked for a very long time. So uh, good question, Daniel. Danny Weiser, who you know, you guys know who he is. He's created a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, over on Facebook says, a piece of advice when creating magic, remember that your goal is to create a trick. It's not real magic. <laughs> True that. True that. Um, this is what uh, Fedon has found out recently about Proteus. Proteus, by the way, if you guys missed it, real mind reading. It looks like it. <laughs> uh, no props. Totally impromptu. Go look. It's good. Uh, he says, after his experience with Proteus, I fully agree. Creators have to understand people buy things and it just doesn't fit uh, and will moan and complain. Never blame yourself. It's them, not you. Probably, yeah. It's a tough reality. You could work on something that works perfect for you. And you put it out because of that. It's a technique. It's a method. It's something that you've worked on and created. And then when you put it out, there will be people that just won't like it. But that's with anything. That's with any product. I hear it every time when I go out to eat. People complain about the food they're getting. Some people you just can't please. And as a creator of magic, I've done it. Danny Weiser's here, he's done it. Rob Greenlee's here, he's done it. I saw Mark Cassetti hanging out, he's done it. 
some people just will never be happy with what you give them. Uh, so as a magic creator or as a future creator, I hope some of you out there do decide to go down the path of you know, creating your own magic because it is fun, it's exciting, and you have material potentially no one else is doing until you decide to sell it, um, that people are just not always going to like it. I mean, some people are harsh about it, but that's just our industry, and you need to know that. Instead of being blindsided by it, I'd rather you know about it going in. It shouldn't stop you from wanting to do this stuff, but it should definitely be something that you are aware of at the end of the day, okay? Um, James, um, what if you're using another company's product? I talked with the company of the product I'm using and got a personal email and phone number. How should I proceed? Maybe. Okay, so... Sometimes what a magic company will do, let's say that you've bought a product and you've come up with your own way to do stuff. Sometimes the company will actually offer for you to film something and they'll include it as like an additional handling or an additional idea for the product. I know some products these days, companies will put together a, uh, like a group, like a Facebook group about a product and you can go in and, and you know, talk to each other and get creative together and share ideas. Um, so pretty typical thing. Um, I'd be curious to know uh, James says, though, do I want to protect my tricks and keep them from other... That's up to you, James. It's totally up to you. There are a couple benefits, of course, to keeping things to yourself. There's also some cons. So again, talking about creating magic. One pro, if you want to keep the magic to yourself, is that you have things that you can perform that no one else can do. If that benefits you, that's good. If you're a performer and you want to do original magic, if you want to go on TV, you've got original magic, that's great. Keep in mind, though, on the other side of the coin... There does, it does happen. There will be times where you created something, you didn't release it, someone else comes along that year, a couple years later, and puts out the trick that you came up with. They do get credit for the trick because unfortunately in the magic industry, the first person to market is the person that gets credit for the trick. It's a harsh reality and it does happen. It's happened to me, it's happened to other friends of mine that they have an idea, they have a trick, Maybe they're even working on getting it produced to release it. Someone else puts it on the market. You can't release the same trick. It's, whoever gets there first, unfortunately, is the person that gets the credit for that product. It happens a lot, and that's something else you should definitely be aware of. So I think if you want to protect your stuff, sure, you can keep it for yourself and do it. But keep in mind, there will be a chance that someone else will release it. Uh, it's, we call it independent creation in the magic industry. It's known to happen. It will happen. And maybe it's happened to you already. So just keep that in mind, James. Uh, Nigel says, there's definitely an evolution of tech magic. Uh, some exciting visuals with holograms, projections for part of the work, exciting times ahead. Yeah, I mean, the projection mapping stuff you can do. It all looks like real magic, doesn't it? It's really cool stuff. Need answering. Oh, my God, Aaron. <laughs> uh, Luke, do you know if the tuck case vanishes in the Traveler deck 2.0 because I came up with the trick where the spectator can think of a card and they hold the deck of cards in the box? in their hand and then the whole deck including the box vanishes and they're left with the card they thought of I'm not sure about that answer there Aaron um, traveler deck who produce who whose trick is the traveler deck so I'm not really too sure which that one is um, playing cards that truck oh so James thinks in the truck is playing cards okay All right. Daniel you're welcome for the response um, Loops, uh, uh, metallic deck. Is it a mark deck? Yes, they are. Yes, the decks that are here at the top above me or to the side of me, uh, those are marked. Uh, and they're marked so that when you do the riffling of the animation, you can tell what the cards are. Uh, I think it showed that in one of the trailers I put up too. Uh, they are marked. Yes, the metallic decks are marked. And they look really cool, don't they? Uh, pretty cool. Uh, Loops, so they want to know who's the owner of the company, Murphy's Magic. Great question. And he's a great guy. I'm talking about Mark Murphy. Mark is uh, going to be celebrating 20 years of business next year in 2018. We're all very excited about that. Uh, Mark and his son, Austin, uh, are the guys that uh, you know keep the, keep the ship going, keep it floating. We do have a team of about 60 people behind us, though. Marketing people, sales people, warehouse crew. I'm there. Some other magician guys are here, too. It's an amazing company, amazing crew, but the owner of the company, the founder and president of the company is Mark Murphy. Um, and I've had a chance to sit down with him a few times and chat with him. Um, he's just a really, really great guy. Really cares about the magic industry and wants to do as much as he can, not only to keep things going, of course, as a business, but also make things even better and exciting. 
in the magic industry. So he's always looking at new and fun, exciting things to do, whether it's products or new ways to get this stuff to you guys. So um, he really is passionate about this stuff. So his name is Mark Murphy, and that explains Murphy's magic. So there you go. All right. Um, James says that truck has top hats or cups and balls. Tricks interesting. All right, all right. Welcome to the show, uh, Jeffrey. Good to see you. Uh, Rob says, let's hope it's not real rabbits too, James. Otherwise, it will be a tad smell. Yeah, true that. Uh, is Mark a creator or, or even or ever been a creator? Mark isn't a magic creator. He's just a guy that really likes magic. Um, he actually, I'll give you a little history. I'm not going to go too deep because I don't want to get too personal. But Mark used to be a professional tennis player um, and then uh, ended up getting into the magic industry. And then he ended up deciding, you know what, I'm going to start my own company. I really, this is what happened. He did one thing, tennis, started to get into magic. And then he said, you know what, I really, really like this magic stuff and thought that he could do some good for it. And that's when he started up Murphy's. So for him, it wasn't something he ever really thought about doing until he got a taste of the magic world. And then he said, you know what, I like this stuff. And that's when Murphy's magic became a reality. Um, and I've got some really fun pictures I can show you guys of, Murphy's when it first started. Maybe I'll do that on the next show. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how Murphy's Magic uh, kicked off. So, um, yeah. All right. Loops has a question. I saw what it is, so we'll address this. He says, I hope you won't skip it. I'm not skipping anything around here. All right. Do you have all rights to make and use Blue Memento More? Um, Ramsey said that you didn't that he didn't know anything about the blue edition. So I'm going to tell you guys a quick little thing about those. Okay, number one, I have nothing to do with extra cards. I am not on the product development side or the playing card side. Um, that's a different department of the company and one that I'm not involved in. But what I will say is, and I'll give you the analogy that I've given to several people, and they they pretty much tin they they started to understand it. They were on the fence, and then they they started to understand the situation. So um, when it came to the blue decks. We'll talk about creating magic again. This is something that you need to think about because this is a deck of cards that was created as well. Um, Murphy's owns the rights to the Memento Mores because we paid for the decks to be produced. We paid for them to be designed. We paid for the whole process. We took the risk. We had them all printed and done. Um, so yes, um, I will say something else as well. You know, one of the guys that does work on the company, Jason Brumbelow, um, has had the same thing happen to him, but it's the way business works. Uh, Jason used to work for another company. He released one deck with the company. He designed one deck in particular, left the company, and the company then pr proceeded to produce an entire series of this deck of cards that Jason produced for the company. Okay, That's not bad. They were allowed to do it. He understood it. He said to me, I totally get it. And he says very openly, he was paid very well to do that. He was paid very well to create the deck and to do it. Uh, and, and he had a great time working there, and then he left, and they took the deck, and they made a whole series out of that deck. Unfortunately, some people look at something because they're close to it, and they feel like they have ownership of it. The reality is they don't, um, and so we, you know, as a company, if we, if we have a product that we own the rights to, we have every, you know, every intention to do as we please with it. Uh, some people may like that, some people may not, but if you look at any business, and I'm going to give you the perfect example here, Loopsa, as a creator myself, I'm going to give you two examples. Number one, if you pay someone to build a house and design a house, you buy the house, you own the house, right? Does that mean you can never paint the house? Does that mean you can never customize the house to your own liking? A contractor, that's someone that you pay. They don't own the house, you do. So you can do as you please. Same with the car, right? Um, the same thing could be said for what I've done, which is create magic for TV. I've created hundreds of tricks for TV. I was paid to do it as a consultant. Chris Angel owns the rights to all the tricks that I created. If he decides to change them, he's using some of my tricks right now in his Vegas show. Am I going to complain about it? No, I'm actually humbled by it. Um, when it comes to things that you create, if someone's paid you to do that, then they do own it. And that's just, that's not just in the magic industry, that's in any industry. You know, if you're a developer and someone hires you to come up with an app and you design an app, you leave the company, then if they want to change the app, rename it, change the color of it, change the color theme, the scheme, they can do whatever they want with it, right? That's just the way the world works, man. Like it's nothing personal. And it's, it's unfortunate that some people do take it personal uh, at the end of the day. 
So, yeah. Um, did you announce the winner of the Shiner deck? Uh, I did, Daniel, over on our uh, Facebook page. I sure did at the top of the uh, top of the page. Um, great story, Luke. Thanks. Yeah, the story about Mark Murphy is really cool, right? Uh, Andrew says, I had a short conversation with Mr. Austin Murphy about the Fox Targets. Seemed to be a really nice guy. He is. I mean, Austin is a young guy. He's in his 20s. He's not, like, super young. Um, super, super cool guy. And definitely looking forward to getting to know him more as time goes on. Um, you know, those the Murphy's family makes everyone that works at Murphy's feel like family. And I think that's one thing that makes me really um, excited about being part of uh, the whole, you know, Murphy's world. It's really fun. It's cool. Uh, welcome, Nikolai. Nice to see you over here on uh, Facebook. Uh, Luke, it's called Traveling Deck 2.0 by Tekel. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, I think the box does um, vanish from a method spectator can think, so I do have the rights to produce that, or do I? You know, here's the thing, Aaron. Aaron's asking a good question. He's saying that he's uh, checked out a trick. He's got a different method or uh, a different way to perform it, a variation on it, we'll say. Here's what you do, guys, and, and Aaron, this is what you should do. Contact Tekel. Um, anytime that your work is inspired by someone else's work, in particular right now, we're talking about uh, Traveling Deck 2.0. Let's say that that's the trick that you worked on, and now you have a new way to do it. Maybe it became a new trick. Contact that person. So, Aaron, you should contact Tekel and see what he has to say about that. If he's cool with it, run with it. If he's not, maybe find out why he's not. And then maybe you can find a way to make it work so that he does give you permission. Because, again, without his inspiration, without him putting out his trick, you wouldn't have anything to have inspired you. You would have never probably invented the trick that you've invented if it wasn't for Tekel coming up with his version. And that goes for you guys in any tricks that you've ever purchased or that have inspired you to create your own tricks. Okay, So I think that's what you should do, Aaron is to contact the creator of the effect and get his thoughts on it. And if he does like it, maybe he'll even give you a quote about it. People are known to do it. The reality is, as one creator talking to you guys, we like it when someone contacts us and asks for permission or credit. Most of the times we'll just say yes because we're, we're, we, we like that someone's taken the time to reach out. That means a lot. So do that and I'm pretty sure you'll be okay. I'm not going to guarantee you that. I'm not the guy that created that trick. But more times than not, magicians that have created stuff, someone comes to them and goes, hey, do you mind if I do that? More times than not, they go, yeah, like, I'm glad you reached out. Here's a quote, good stuff. If you don't do that, they can end up getting uh, their friends. They could get people against you and go, well, he never reached out. He stole my trick. You get a bad reputation. The trick's not going to sell well, and uh, that never ends well. <laughs> so there you go, Aaron. Garrett says... Uh, what is the best way to dress as a magician when performing at gigs, whether it is at uh, fairs, private functions, or corporate events, etc.? Uh, Garrett, I think it depends on you and your style in general as a performer. What are you representing yourself as? Don't try to dress up like something that you're not. What I mean by that is, let's say that you're a younger guy. Don't try to show up in a tux with tails. Like dress appropriately, dress nice. Um, maybe you know if you're going to be around something like a fair. Maybe a little bit more casual. If you're going to be at something like a wedding or a corporate event, maybe wear a suit or wear something that looks really, really nice. You know, go to a nice store and have that one performing outfit. Um, but I definitely think it depends on you. You don't want to, again, try to dress up like something that you're not. I did that as a kid. I was 12 years old. I tried to do a gig in Tux and Tails, and I looked like a total idiot. <laughs> so, yeah, just saying. Uh, Nigel says, um, Luke... Uh, how about the development of Learning Magic Online? Opportunities for creators to share their work online, uh, artofmagic.com. Yeah, I mean, Art of Magic is a great resource. Here's what I will say about online stuff because we're doing this right now, right? We're online. We're talking to each other through the online space. Um, I like it, but I don't like it at the same time. I like it because of the accessibility. I like that we can connect or you can learn stuff. Maybe you're not near a magic shop. It's a great way to be able to bridge that gap. The one thing I don't like about it, though, is the, that, that missing part in the middle where if you do go to a magic shop, more times than not, you'll find someone that can maybe be your mentor, can help guide you and give you advice that you really can't get online. And that's the one disconnect I see in the online spaces. Um, you can learn magic, you can learn secrets, but you don't get the guidance to go along with it, if that makes sense. And I think that's a shame for a lot of young people that they don't even know that that exists. You can have a mentor, a real person to help you and guide you because they can teach you so much more than just the tricks. They can give you advice that only comes from performing, um, advice that only comes from age and experience. 
and you're not going to get that when you just go online and hit buy and learn something, you know. So it's good and bad, you know. So uh, loops, uh, sadly, people will stop buying effects gimmicks ebooks because a lot of guys steal them and post them to the internet. I mean, it's going to happen, and those are probably the people that aren't going to buy the stuff anyway. So I mean, there's no way you can prevent it for sure. Uh, loops. Uh. Nikolai, hey, Mr. Dancy, been performing magic for as long as I can remember. I love to hear that, my friend. Uh, 22 now. All right. Any advice on how to gather more footage of audience reactions? Uh, a little tight on finding friends to film for me. Um, audience reactions. So you mean like when you're performing? Uh, because Nikolai, one thing you could do that I've seen a few different people do um, is you could actually put a GoPro on. Either put it on your chest, you could wrap it, put it on your head. Um, and then that way you could have someone filming you maybe from the side. And then you could also have the film, you know, you filming people with the GoPro and just getting their reactions you're performing. I've seen quite a few people do that. Um, it looks pretty cool. I know Kashawn Wallace has done it uh, and is doing it. A buddy, Max Major, he was one of the first people I saw doing it. Um, but you can do that, um, you know, for sure. Uh, Aaron, I, he didn't actually inspire me. I got the inspiration from the Omni deck and it went out. Uh, went on from there and I came up uh, with that I wanted to banish the whole deck after I came up with the method I found out about the traveling deck 2.0 I mean Aaron I think a lot of it if it's based though on the trick if the method is similar to the traveling deck I still think you should try to reach out to Kel and maybe he'll actually you know give you some help with it or something you know uh, James uh, what if you're using a non-magic related company's product in the production of your illusions this is stepping outside of magic's usual circle of community what if you're using a non-magic related company's product in production of your illusion? I mean, I think that's, I mean, I, if, you're, if you're something outside of the magic world, I think you're okay, James. I mean, I don't see why that would be you know, a problem, you know? Uh, Garrett, you're welcome. Uh, Loopsa says you can also buy a tripod. Yes, if you want to get audience reactions, you can also buy a tripod. Yeah, that's definitely another good uh, suggestion. Loopsa, thank you, my friend. All right, uh, back over to YouTube real quick. I haven't been there in a hot minute. I, I don't want to leave you guys out. Um, but I do want to make sure that you guys are here. Uh, can't wait! For, can't wait for Tarantula too. Me too. Me too. Uh, someone says they're going to do something as soon as the live stream's over. We'll be done in just a few minutes, guys. I've just uh, had a lot to say and a lot of questions, I should say, to help you guys when it comes to creating magic. Um, same. I love online stuff. Yeah, I mean, online stuff's cool. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Rob says I get to have many jam sessions while I work. Online stuff is great. It is good, Rob. It is good. Yeah. Uh, da -da -da -da. Stefan says, even if they change the deck color, it's their deck. They do whatever they want with it. No disrespect, Chris, but it's the way it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, there's no hard feelings either way. It's just, unfortunately, someone's taking it the wrong way. I think that's the problem when it comes to the blue decks. Uh, Stefan says, uh, Ramsey had his fans. They're going to have to deal with it. The deck is Murphy's, and he can't do anything about it. Yeah, again, it's not malicious. It's just something that, I mean, sometimes you just can't win. Let's we'll put it that way. Uh, yeah. Da, da, da. Uh, let's see. Let's see. All in all, is a good question. Uh, let's say I have a trick and put on my performance on YouTube. Years later, I see someone sells that trick because uh, somehow he came up with it too. Who has now the rights? Uh, me because I performed first online. I mean, you can use online as a reference, um, but unfortunately, the true testament to ownership of a product is whoever puts out on the market first. Um, you could show from a creative standpoint that you did create it, but it's hard for someone to reverse that once it hits the market, to take it off the market with all the money and time invested to produce it, get it out there. Um, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put unpublished videos on their YouTube and then they will, um, keep them there as reference for crediting purposes. But I mean, stuff's going to happen at the end of the day, you know? Uh, all in all, so uh, so do Murphy's buy the trick from the creator for an amount, or does the creator receive royalties from sold units? So we can do it either way. I mean, uh, when you when you come to us with a product, and any anyone with a product, um, basically you can do it two ways. Number one, uh, you can have your product bought right out. So let's say I have an idea that I want to do with this, but I need Murphy's to produce it for me. So I go, you know what? I want this trick to come out. Can you guys film it? Can you do a cool trailer? Can you produce it and distribute it all over the world? Well, yes, we can. All right. So if you want to do that, Luke, we can either uh, give you this amount of money to own the rights to the product and you'll get this many units. Uh, what I mean by that, guys, is if Murphy's decides to buy the trick from you, 
you'll receive a certain number of finished products to sell. So let's say that this trick comes in a nice box. It's got your download link on there. This is produced very well, the gimmick. You get like a certain number of those packaged to sell. Whether you're a performer, uh, maybe you go do a lecture, you can sell them at your lectures or online on your website or social media. Or you can do royalties, which is where you get a certain percentage of the sales that are distributed. So let's say that um, you want to get X amount of royalties, and it's discussed between Murphy's and you as the creator, um, that you get this amount of royalties for each sale. So if X the number of units are sold, you get this much money, and you do the math, and you figure out what do you think is a better thing for you. Do you think that you're going to sell more and make more money on royalties, or do you think you're going to do better if you just get paid in one lump sum? Um, but either way, you do get finished units to sell as well. It's a nice little bonus that we like to do for you. So that's kind of how that world works when it comes to producing products, guys, is um, you either get bought out or you get royalties. But either way, the company does own the product, okay? Uh, Rob Greenley has a nice thing. He says, I think when you create any art, you should create it for you. Some will like it, some won't. But above all, you got to make something you can be proud of. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's got to be, it's your thing, right? So you got to love what you do, you know? Um, what's Magic Guy saying here? Wow, love affair. What's going on, you guys? What, what's going on over here? Uh, Hero Boy Luke, what do you think about Paul Harris? Uh, he is genius in creating magic, but he's also a good performer. I uh, never saw him perform. There's almost no footage of him. You know, I think that's done on purpose. You know, Paul Harris has this, like, air of mystery around him. You know what I mean? Like, he's this guy that you hear about, but you don't see. And when you do see him, he's only there, like, in a very limited capacity. You see him and you turn around and he's gone. It's like this legendary figure. Um, he did have products out back in the 90s, uh, VHSs of him performing and teaching stuff. Lately though, he's more behind the scenes um, finding really amazing products and putting them out. But uh, what do I think of him? I think he's amazing. I'm actually really humbled that I had a chance to work with him uh, on the Skycap project, on the original Skycap and then Skycap 2.0. Um, Paul treated me really well. I got to know him a little bit. I think he's an amazing guy. Um, definitely one of the most creative magicians in the world. Um, the way he thinks is just so abstract and different. So yeah, big fan of, um, big, big fan of Paul Harris for sure. Uh, Rob says, can I ask about Tarantula 2? Why was it pushed back again? It was supposed to be released on the 17th of this month. That was pushed back to August. So basically what happened with Tarantula 2 um, is that because of the shipment, um, a lot of times shipments from overseas, they get shipped by um, via water. So they're on a boat <laughs> and they're coming over. And sometimes customs can get slowed down. Sometimes there's little hiccups when it comes to that type of stuff. Uh, that's the reason, guys, why Tarantula 2 isn't out just yet because of that. It's just not here yet. So uh, it's on the way. Uh, sometimes these things just take time. So, yeah. All right. Uh, uh oh, it looks like Tom's got some lightning in his house. That's not good. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, speaking of creating magic, I am going to give you guys a chance to get hooked up with five free tricks right now. And these come from Mr. Gregory Wilson. If you haven't seen this before, get ready to get your hands on these. The first one will be email you, emailed to you today, uh, and the rest will come every day after that. You've seen this before, you know what's coming. It won't last long, but I'll be back. We'll finish this up, get a few questions answered, and get out of here. All right. So, Five free tricks, you want them, here's how you get them. I'm gonna do everything I can to not sound like a sales pitch, but listen, five. Five free tricks right out of my repertoire. They're fantastic, part of my modesty, but they're impromptu. Listen, pens, bills, everyday objects, Anytime, anywhere, you'll love it. Just hit the subscribe button. Have a lot of fun. We'll see you on the other side. You can always hit the unsubscribe button. I don't recommend it, but uh, the, did I mention free? 200, 300, 400. What? 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 It's great. Go. We'll have some fun. All I have to say is limited time offer. While supplies last, operators are standing by. See you soon. All right, there you go, my friends. That is your look at five free tricks from Mr. Gregory Wilson. Um, great guy and a, uh, an amazing uh, creator and teacher. So you're going to get the good stuff from Greg. Uh, I do want to say, uh, someone said something about the volume. Turn the volume down uh, if you're on headphones. Magic guy, is the volume too loud on that video? Is that what's going on? Because I can, uh, 
I can adjust that for sure, but no one's ever mentioned to me that the volume on that one was too loud. I could definitely do that uh, going forward though. So yeah, I did want to mention that because I saw that pop up. Um, is it better to purchase magic books than to purchase individual effects from a creativity aspect? Can books help you boost your magic creativity too? Jesse Wilder's asking that. Uh, that is a very good question. Uh, and hello, Andrew Nagy. Good to see you, man. Um, I am a big fan of books. Uh, I really believe that um, you'll get a lot more bang for your buck from books. Um, I mean, any book that you buy is going to have a ton of tricks in it. And, you know, you could basically get the same for $30, which is a lot of what the single trick DVDs cost. Now, you could get a book for like that same amount of money and you'll get like 30 to 40 tricks. So it's way, 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 way out of um, way out of proportion there. Uh, I do think from a creativity standpoint, though, uh, when it comes to creating magic, I like books better for that. I think I'm more focused when I read books. Uh, I also think that you're able to process the information better. Um, and I've said this before, that I really believe that if you just watch magic, like a DVD or maybe on your phone, we're, all, we're used to doing that all day, every day anyway. We're used to looking at a computer or a TV or a phone, and so our mind is never really focused because we're always thinking about the next thing we're going to look at. But when you have a book, you're kind of on a one-track mindset where you're really focused in on what you're doing. And I think that's why books for me have always been um, a better way to learn. And it does help you get your creativity going, uh, I think because you're actually walking through the stuff. And then once you start to really understand it and grasp it, you think about other ways you can do it. So for me, yeah, books have worked a, a charm. Um, when I was visiting my, the house I grew up in recently, I did a video showing kind of some of the books that I, I read and stuff like that. And it also reminded me of just how much I miss um, reading all these exciting books and stuff. And it, it kind of re-inspired me too. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm relatively new to magic. Uh, how are we doing, Christy? Um, I know a couple of tricks and I can perform them to friends, but I also like to perform them to strangers as well. But I get so anxious. How could I deal with that? Uh, it's a great question. And I think that the best way to get over the anxiety is you've got to just perform, perform, and perform. The best way to kind of start that is to perform for friends and family first. That'll kind of help get you in the routine of being more comfortable in front of people. Um, I will say, um, if you are someone that's a little bit younger and you're in high school, take drama classes. Drama classes, they make you get up in front of a class. They make you do stuff, talk in front of a group, which will help carry over to you and perform. If you're a little bit older and you're in college, you should take a public speaking course. Um, you're forced, again, to get up in front of a group and do a presentation. And the cool thing about the public speaking courses are you're actually graded on this stuff and you're critiqued on it. So the teacher will actually help you figure out the things that you need to work on and do better. Um, so those are a couple of tips when it comes to presenting yourself in a more um, comfortable way. Hope that helps you out there, Christy. Uh, what's the best sold product of Murphy's? I don't have that stat. I can tell you some of the more pro popular things recently that have come out, the ones we've had trouble keeping in stock, uh, Curtis, Sucker Punch and The Gift. I don't even know if either one of those is in stock right now. Those were literally flying off the shelves when they were released. I know the gift, I don't even know if that's in stock now, but that, that one people wanted, even when, even when we had them back-ordered, that back-ordered shit that was already bought, and it was like this endless cycle of like we, we couldn't keep up with the demand. So those are two of the more recent ones that we've had trouble keeping in stock. Again, that's Sucker Punch and the gift. Yeah. Gaff says he's saving up for Blackpool. Uh, that will be my only convention I'll be going to next year. That's a good one, though, Gaff. You're going to pick one, either that or Magic Live. I'll be at Magic Live next month, guys. By the way, if you're going to be there, let's chat. Love to see you guys there. All right. Uh, all in all, says uh, Murphy's had those series where magicians shared free tricks on their YouTube. Why don't you make them anymore? Uh, could it be a way to promote new magicians too? Uh, you know, we're just changing things up, evolving. You know, we also did not used to do live shows, so we're kind of trying new things. We do post up about every month and a half. Uh, a free trick, though, from our At the Table series. Um, the last one, I think, was Jeff Preys, so I'll probably put another one up here in the next week or two. Um, another free truck, another free trick from our at the table series. So we're doing those instead now too. So, yeah. Uh, can you teach how to push two cards and push off? Not today, Mario. I'm not going to be teaching anything today. Um, but if you are interested in the double lift that I do, you can find it on my at the table lecture. Yeah. Uh, I go over all the details there. Yeah. 
Uh, Christy, you're welcome for the advice. No worries. Uh, Gap says you might go to Lads. Okay, okay. Um, haven't seen the new use of Sucker Punch on Instagram, the card penetration. I haven't, haven't, I'll have to check that out. All right. Uh, why did Risen by Tony Clark got discontinued? Uh, I'm not sure, Magic Guy. Uh, I'm not too sure about that one. Yeah. Uh, I've been twice, Luke. See some crazy stuff there. Oh, yes. Talking about Blackpool, there is crazy stuff. Unless you're talking about Magic Live, and there's crazy stuff there, too. Andrew Nagy, who do you think, in your opinion, is the most influential creator in Magic in the last 40 years? Mm. You know, there's a couple big players that I'll mention. One we just talked about, Paul Harris. Um, we'll put him in there, and we'll put uh, Tommy Wonder in there, too. I think those would be the top two guys, I would say, creatively. There's some other guys below that that are just geniuses. Uh, Gate and Bloom, Gate and Bloom. I, I just don't understand where he comes up with his stuff. He's he's a he's like a mad genius. Uh, he's another guy that just you wonder how he come up with all that stuff. Um, and then there was another guy, Stuart James. Stuart James was too smart for his own good. A lot of one story about Stuart James people don't know is he actually he had, if I'm not mistaken, he had invisible friends. So I'll tell you how crazy he was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think about the magician? I haven't seen the magician's TV series. I know what you're talking about. I haven't seen it. Uh, is it good, Curtis? Uh, Gas yeah, talking about Blackpool. Yeah, you see some crazy stuff at Blackpool. Yeah. Uh, Paul Harris has beautiful tricks. Yeah, he does. Right. Uh, Luke, are you ever ashamed of how much money you spend on magic? No, I never look at it as spending money. I look at it as investing money into the things that I buy or have purchased. I never look at it as like, ah, what did I spend? I look at it as, well, what do I have? And like I mentioned, you know, I did go home recently to the house I grew up in, and I was looking at all the books that I bought. I mean, when I was growing up, I would mow yards. I would save my money from holidays, my birthday, and I would buy magic books. I even used to work at the magic shop as a teenager, and on my lunch breaks, I would read the books that I couldn't afford yet. Um, so my lunch break, I would pull the books from the shelf. I'd go in the back, have my sandwich, and I would read books. And then I would eventually be able to buy them. So I look at it as like a really uh, cool thing. That Yeah, these are the things that I bought. Um, what do you think about the trick cipher? I haven't seen it, Thomas. I know about it, but I haven't seen it. So I can't comment on that one, unfortunately. Yeah, so sorry about that. All right, uh, let's pop back over to Facebook one more time, and then we'll go back to YouTube for a second, and then we're going to we're going to get out of here. All right, is that fair? Because we've been on here for a little while. And uh, Roddy McGee, another creator. I'm glad that he popped by. I'd love to get his thoughts on all this creative magic stuff. That's today's topic, guys. If you're just joining us, we're talking all about creating magic. A really popular and fun topic. I've had a lot of fun today. You guys have had a lot of good questions about it. And um, we just had a, a lot of fun things to say about creating magic, right? Let's see what Roddy has to say, though. Uh, Roddy says, um, I think that creating magic purely for market stifles creativity. Uh, as you tend to subconsciously drop ideas as non-marketable. Creating effects for yourself is the way to go. You'll find that you come up with much more original material that suits your style and personality. Just my humble opinion. Now, I mean, I, I'm not going to argue that at all. I definitely think that when you're thinking about creating magic to make money and market it, you definitely get kind of jaded. And you get blocked because it's like, all right, now I'm not just freely creating. I'm creating for this. I'm creating to make money. Uh, so I think a lot of times when people do it for money, the quality suffers. And that's my opinion on that. But I, I'm all about creating for personal use first um, before just creating magic just to sell it. I think that's a very good thing. And thank you, Roddy, for your opinion. And it's always good to see you, Roddy. Um, Nigel says, can you register an effect or patent that's similar when a screenwriter registers a script? And here's the thing, Nigel, and all you guys. You know, magic's a very strange thing because what we kind of create isn't necessarily something you can patent. A lot of times people call it intellectual property, an idea. And that's not something that is worth the investment that it takes to patent it. You know, you're not going to make a ton of money. You're not going to retire selling magic tricks or a magic trick. So to spend the money and effort to copyright something or patent it, you're going to end up maybe losing money at the end of the day. Again, the only way to really get ownership of something, and even then it's not really always going to be protected, is to market it. Um, I know Teller from Penn & Teller, he had a court case where he was trying to go against someone that was performing a ripoff of his um, shadow act. If you haven't seen it, he's got like a 
it's the stage is dark. He's got a little vase on the table with a rose on it. And he takes a knife and he goes up to the shadow, not the actual flower. And he starts to cut at the shadow. And then the leaves on the actual flower start to fall off. It was a complete ripoff of his routine. And he took the guy to court that was performing the ripoff of his trick. I don't know the result of that. I'm sure there's enough smart people out here. Someone can tell me if that ever resulted in, in his favor or if the guy was told to stop doing it. But I don't even know the result of that. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, again, there is no way to really patent or protect this stuff. Um, creating magic, we kind of have to go on this merit system. You know, We have to try to do the right thing. And even sometimes when you want to put something out and you find out someone else has done it, sometimes you just have to do the right thing and go, you know what? I'll come up with something else. And you just have to kind of pull back. You know what I mean? It sucks. I get it. But sometimes you just have to do it that way. Um, Daniel Ricks says, um, Teller won the case to do uh, pantomime, so the shadow act. Um, what does that mean, though, Daniel? Does that mean that he... The other guy can't perform it anymore? Did he actually get money for that case? I would like to know the answer to that, actually, if you know that. Because that was a big deal, I know, when um, when that was all going down. But, yeah, you know, creating magic is a lot of fun, guys. That's the thing. I don't want it to all be negative about people stealing and stuff. But um, it's a lot of fun. And when you finally get to the point where you have a product that's produced and you hold this finished product, this thing, and it's got your name on it, it was really good, uh, and that's what you should be proud of at the end of the day. And uh, it's it's something that also it's not impossible. Um, you just need to make sure that you do the right steps. You take the right steps. You do the right things. And crediting along the way, checking the history, and that's the other cool thing. You know, if you want to submit your magic to us here at Murphy's, you know, we have a team of very experienced people that have seen a lot of magic through the years. And when something does pop up and looks familiar, they'll pretty much know whether or not it's new and original or not. If they don't know, they'll always reach out to people that may know uh, a little bit more. We have a great resource, um, a lot of resources available to us when it comes to finding out if things are original or not. So um, just something to think about. But, um, you know, it is a process to put something out. You know, we want to protect you. We want to protect ourselves. We want to make sure we do the right thing because, you know, again, Murphy's has been around for 20 years now. We're not going to be putting out stuff that, uh, you know, we're not going to be copying people's ideas and stuff if, you know, that's just not the way the magic world works because it's a very small, small market. I promise you that. All right. So I think that is about it from us here over on Facebook. So I want to wish all of my Facebook friends well. If you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you are following us so we're on Facebook and uh, you'll know when we're live there. We also do giveaways over on Facebook. We did a live giveaway last weekend of the deck of cards right over there, the Shiner deck. And uh, you only found out about it if you follow us on Facebook. So uh, congrats to our winner from that last weekend. Um, and we'll be doing more giveaways on Facebook. So make sure that you are keeping up with us over on Facebook. All right, cool, cool. Uh, let's jump back over to YouTube real quick. One last time, wrap this up with my friends over there and see what else you guys have to say before we start to shut this down too. Um, how much the metallic decks? Uh, the metallic decks, uh, let us look together. Now here's the thing about the uh, the deck set that you're seeing over here, uh, the Glimmer deck, the one that looks like it's gold, that is only available with the set that you're seeing. So this over here, you only get the gold deck, the Glimmer deck, if you buy the set. The Shiner deck that you see, the silver one, you can buy that as a um, single deck. But I'm going to bring the Murphy's website up real quick. And since someone is asking about that deck in particular, I'll give you all the details. So let's do that together. Um, we'll go back over to the Murphy's Magic website and check out the prices. I think the set that you just saw, the two decks, is $24.95, but I want to make sure I have the right answer for you. So let's see. That's the Shiner deck, but this is the set we're talking about. Uh, that's $29.95, excuse me. So that's for the two decks. Again, the Glimmer deck, which is the gold one, um, this one, is only available as the set, and there were only 2,500 of these decks made. Um, so if you want to get one, you, you got to buy the set. Um, so that's twenty nine ninety five for the set. If you want to pick up just the Shiner, which is really cool, guys, if you haven't seen this, um, the actual Tuck has a uh, Shiner feature built into it. This deck is eleven ninety five. It's $12. Uh, 
Um, and these guys are putting out this set because the guys at Mechanic Industries are celebrating five years. It's like their five-year birthday, I guess you could call it that. Um, and this is a better look at the Shiner, uh, Shiner deck, too. Um, but check it, check this out, though, for real. This is really cool. I'm going to mute that so I don't have to hear it. Um, if you look at the Shiner aspect to it, that's one of my favorite things because you actually can see the cards uh, on the... Uh, is they're being dealt off, which is pretty cool. Let's see what that is in the video here. Uh, I can't skip ahead. Okay, so th look at the animation on those things. Isn't that cool? And here's the um, the tuck. You'll be seeing that here. Look at that. It's really nice. There, there it is. So now you can actually see the cards as they're being dealt off um, because of the box, the tuck, the, and, the, and the design of that. It truly becomes a shiner, and uh, you'll be seeing that in just a second. So I did want to show that to you guys. Of course, here's the flipbook anim animation again, which will actually show you the markings because these are marked as well. So check it out. Uh, you see that? Isn't that cool? <laughs> it just looks really fun. Yeah, just have to riffle them and there they go, taking a life of their own. I think the marking system will pop up here in just a second. There it is. You can see there the cards are marked and uh, there are some Joker gaps come with it too. Uh, the coin does not come with it. You can purchase those separate, but I did want to say that. Um, but here comes the uh, tuck, the shiner. Thing that I really like. Check this out. Um, it's coming up here at the, uh, towards the end of the clip here. And uh, there's the animation again. And there's the shiner. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? The box itself, the tuck there, allows you to, uh, to see that stuff. So there you go. The set again. If you want to pick up that set, it's $29.95. If you want to get just the shiner deck, it's $11.95. Um, we got some featured dealers out there. We got Hocus Pocus featured dealer. Uh, and uh, a few other guys uh, out there too, but uh, it's the one I know off the top of my head. So there you go. All right, let's pop back over to YouTube real quick. See if there are any last questions before we get out of here. We're hitting the two-hour mark, which means we got to go. All right. Uh, da, da, da. These are very nice cards. Yes, Gaff Magic. Uh, well, it's awesome waiting for Magic Shops from my country to get this in stock. Yes, pretty cool, right? Uh, Simi, uh, hello, I have one year of practice magic, and magic for me is art. I love magic, and I don't think it is for chasing girls. Yeah, some people use it for that. <laughs> you just never know, man. You never, you never know. Um, Magic Guy, how did you get in the Magic Luke as young? Who inspired you? Okay, that's a good question. Maybe that'll be the one that we end on. Um, so David Copperfield is the guy that made me want to be a magician. I saw him on TV when I was about eight, eight years old. Um, he used to do a special every year on TV. I think it was on CBS. And, uh, you know, those were the specials where he did the big thing at the end, uh, like make the Statue of Liberty disappear, where he went over the... Uh, Niagara Falls, uh, he did the one where he made the train car disappear, walked through the Great Wall of China. Those specials are the things that really got me interested in magic as a kid. Um, I never wanted to be the famous magician. I always wanted to be the guy behind the guy. I wanted to be the guy helping create the magic and to be part of that behind-the-scenes action. Um, so that's why I really got really interested in becoming a consultant as, uh, as I got older. And that's why it meant so much to me when I finally had a chance to do it, you know, so... That's who inspired me, and I'm still as inspired and love this stuff now as I did when I was a kid. Nexus says, what if you help someone make an effect and your partners, but you stop working together and they publish this fully original? Is there anything? Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do, Nexus. I know it's a pretty crappy answer, um, but the truth is, uh, if that's what they do, then that's something that they have to live with. They're going to lose a friend by that. Uh, they'll probably be called out on it at some point. Um, but from a legal standpoint or from a moral standpoint, there's nothing really you can do, but, um, it's unfortunate if that happens and it does happen, but, uh, there's nothing that you can do about it, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but yes, the, uh, yeah. let's see. Magic is fun to pick up girls. I don't know about that. That's, uh, that's not the way I ever used it. <laughs> um, I think that's going to wrap us up for YouTube, too. I'm just going to look here. Um, going to have to start setting an alarm so I'm stop missing these. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, what do you think about Patrick Kuhn? I think Patrick's amazing. I've known Patrick for a long time now. He's just a really nice guy, too. You know, he's talented, but he's just a really nice guy. I like him a lot. He's cool. And he lives in Vegas. He's not there all the time, but he lives in Vegas, and that's where I live, too, so... It's always uh, always cool to see Patrick, and uh, I know he's up to some really good things right now. So, yeah, I like him a lot. Uh, what was the first trick you learned? I learned scotch and soda, and I learned a Nesta box. And I still have my first original tricks I bought when I was a kid. 
from a local magic shop. Actually, it was like at a theme park. And those are my original things that I bought. There you go. All right, so that's full circle for me. That'll wrap up today's show. I want to thank you guys for all the great questions. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode all about creating magic. If you have a topic you'd like us to talk about, more than happy to do it for you. Uh, this was one that I thought, because of some of the questions we've had lately, that might work really well, and I think it really did. Um, I had a blast hanging out with you guys, chatting about this stuff. It's definitely a topic that's important to me, and also important to you. So if you have more topics like that, let us know. Um, we're out there, we're listening, and uh, we'll be back again next Wednesday. Same place, same time, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time to chat all about different topics of magic. Sometimes we have interviews and guests, and sometimes it's just these things where we hang out and chat with each other and get to know each other a little bit better. And, and in the meantime, if you do want to you know, learn more about us or have more things answered along the way, you can check us out over on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and right here on YouTube as well. And Mark Call is catching us just as I'm signing off. I'm sorry, Mark, but uh, maybe I'll catch you next time. All right. Let me just show Mark there. Hello, Mark. I want to say hello before I get out of here. Sorry that, uh, sorry we missed you, buddy. But um, there's always next time. All right. So we'll catch you on the flip side. All right. Uh, but yes, that's it, guys, for today's episode all about creating magic. Um, I'll be posting up more topic videos. I've got some really thing, really fun things planned for you guys as I get more and more used to this video stuff that I've been up to. So keep an eye out. I have some other really fun topics I'll be talking about. Uh, I'll be doing some AMA stuff too. If you do some uh, Ask Me Anything stuff, so uh, look for those posts where you can post questions about anything and everything you want to know, and we'll do episodes on those too, uh, or just videos on those things too. So, um, yeah, we're doing a lot of fun things. And again, if you are guy, if you are coming out to Las Vegas for the Magic Live convention, uh, I'd love to hang out with you. If you have some new magic you're working on, you know, today we're talking about creating magic. You got some magic you've been working on. You're thinking about maybe producing it or, or putting it out on the market. Let me know. You know, I'll be there. I'm, I'm definitely going to be there to hang out and uh, um, capture the essence of the convention, but also to see if you guys have magic. Uh, and if you do, let me know. Maybe uh, maybe you'll be on one of these shows with me chatting about your trip. You just, uh, you never know. All right? Cool. Well, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode all about creating magic. I know I did. Had a lot to say, and you guys did too. So that's what makes these things fun. And uh, yeah, so thanks to everyone that showed up and hung out along the way, whether you're here now or you're watching on the replay. Uh, if you have any feedback or other questions for us, post them in the comment section and we'll do our best to get to those too. All right. My name is Luke Dancy and I will catch you guys next week. Same place, same time. But in the meantime, I'm going to get out of here, get back to work. You guys should do the same. Catch you next time.